Hello, we're live. Uh, hello, everyone. We're here for uh, the Indie Plus Games in the Bar, the early session, uh, uh, May 10th, 2014. Um, just a quick thing. This event upholds the Indie Plus community standards. To find out more about those standards, Google for Indie Plus community standards. Uh, please be aware that this event may include discussions about or descriptions of uh, violence, gender and or race issues, and explicit and or abusive language. I'm Brendan Conway. I'm Aaron Fields. I'm Aaron Andrea Galki. I'm John Swan. I am Lucas Schwarzenberg. And I'm Damian Jankowski. Sweet. So John will be running for us today. Uh, yes, I will. Yeah. Today we're running a game of misspent youth. We're going to stick it to the man. Yes, uh, a game of where your youth sticking it to the man. There will be men and there will be sticking. Uh, yes. So let's uh, read the introduction here to the setting. So, welcome to Misspent Youth. It's a fucking awesome game. You're going to have a fun, fun with it. In fact, the fun in this game is so highly concentrated that it violates drug laws in some jurisdictions. Misspent Youth is a science fiction game about friendship and rebellion. It's a role-playing game, which means that you'll create a world to pretend meant to be people you're not. It's a story game, which means that you use the game to create a story in real time as you play it. The protagonists of the game are called Useful Offenders, or Yo's, and the kids are between 12 and 17 years old. The antagonist is called the Authority. It's the force that is fucking up the world and making it a shitty place to live. One person will play the Authority, and the other will play a single Yo. While you're playing your songs for one character, you need to be open to others' opinions of what makes you a good story. And you need to be vocal of your own ideas, too. Don't be a pushy asshole about it. But share your ideas and expect others to do the same. All right. So, um... Rubble. Yes. So, yes, I will be playing the Authority this time. And awesome. uh, everyone else will be playing the Yo's. So, the first of all, we'll have to decide on what sort of setting our uh, dystopian future is going to be. Although, it ne doesn't necessarily have to be in the future. You can you kind of use this for, like, modern day, for instance. You know, it could be, like, a Mormon cult or something, which they did with one running. But I prefer if it's in somewhat in the future, kind of a retro future type game. Sure. So, there's, do you have any ideas of where we might set our game in? Like, one idea I had was basically uh, on a colony ship heading towards a faraway planet run by a sinister computer, which uh, basically controls everybody's lives, for instance. That was one idea I had, but if people have other you know, ideas of what uh, sort of future setting might be, like a, like a future Earth or maybe a future which is sort of like Final Fantasy yeah. ish, you know, you can, you can come up with things like that. Colony, well, colony ship's pretty far out there, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I just... That. <laughs> I, I just... I think uh, it's quite literally out of this world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're out. Sorry. No. No. Sorry, no not, fun. There's one. <laughs> there's, there's... You get one. <laughs> That's it. No more. Okay. Aww. Um, um, I, I just read Snowpiercer. Or not? I didn't read Snowpiercer. I read about Snowpiercer. I should say there's a rather big difference between those. But that was really cool to me, and that seems like that would fit the misspent youth paradigm really well. So I, I would be totally interested in that. So what's so Snowpiercer? Yeah. So Snowpiercer. It's a movie. I'm I'm not at all paid by a company to advertise this. Um, <laughs> Snowpiercer is is a movie that's coming out soon based on a graphic novel about. Uh, they tried to fix global warming. They broke the world. Everything's frozen, and they think no one can live in the cold, frozen wastes anymore. So all of humanity is on this gigantic train that endlessly circles the world. Oh yes, uh, I've actually seen the TV series for that. Yeah, it's and it, it, I mean it's a kind of cool idea. And the the rich people live at the front of the train, and the poor people live at the back of the train, and the poor people regularly try to like rise up and get to the front of the train. And isn't it's it also like nightmare. the people the cold that you live out in the wilderness? I I think I don't actually know a huge amount about it because again I just read about it, but I think in the end it's stuff like they they manage to escape and they find out that like people can live in the wilderness now and they don't have to live on the horrible train anymore. Surprise, mm -hmm. surprise! There's somebody. Yeah, it reminds me of a of a TV series I watched, which sort of like that. Basically, they got they got to various sediments which were like you know, you know heated and all that, and uh, where the where the main uh, cups of civilization were. 
and then there are trains which go between that. But also people who are called mm-hmm. the people of the cold, who basically were immune to the cold of weather, mm. and they can actually live out in the wilderness. Mm. But uh, also because of that, they if they go into like uh, the settlements, they get sick because they can't handle the warm weather, mm. the warm warmer climate because they're so adapted to the cold. Mm. But anyway, that's. Uh, that's probably not the same thing as what you saw, or maybe it is, I'm not sure. It, this is fairly recent, but it, it, regardless, so the the idea of, like, everybody forced into a tight space because the environment outside is hostile and there's an entire section of the populace that's treated like shit sort yeah. of appeals to me. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't you... know what that says about you, but... <laughs> not good things. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be cool. Uh, yes, except maybe rather than actually having it cold, do you think uh, we shouldn't like copy that completely? Oh, sure. Instead of having cold, they like, say it's extremely hot. Maybe say the global warming just went out of control and it just totally, uh, you know, caused uh, you know huge climate change. So if they broke it, I mean, it could be also not just temperature change. It could be something like you know radioactivity is yes. totally called it right. caused the bad zone or something. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Instead of being on the train, we're all on a Plane, uh, or or maybe an under a uh, uh, a tube system of some kind, underground. Uh, sure, subways yeah. or or, or a submarine a train of some kind. Have, maybe we've been told that like the the above ground is all bad, but like and no one's really seen it in a long time. It's just like legend that everything above ground is destroyed. And, and yeah, yeah, that actually sounds like a good. Idea. Yeah, like everybody lives underground now. This is sounding more and some, more like you know, a event paranoia. which basically caused humanity to go underground <laughs> and. Uh, the authority is basically, you know, keeping people there. Yeah. You know, they might know an inkling of that actually it's safe up at the surface, but they just they want to keep everybody under control. I'm good so with it. Yes. Are, are guarded to get up there? Yeah, there'd be uh, you know ways to things blocking uh, the right. the surface. You know, like are we, are maybe guards, still? maybe uh, you know robots gonna... if you want to have like that or. Yeah, you know, maybe all the doors, which basically with security systems. No, we're gonna, we've left the train. We're now underground. Okay. We arrived. Whether so or not so the we're... underground is also on the train is still up for debate, but we'll have to find out as we adventure through the games. Yes. Okay. Correct. So first of all, we have to come up with the authority. So, what is first of all, we have to come up with what the authority's name is. What is the authority called? Well, who is the uh, who is Friend the person computer. who controls society? Yeah. Well, are we doing the computer, or we could do like the like the council, like a shadowy group of figures overseeing? Ah, I everything? like that. This council. That's a, that's about, a good one. We'll call it maybe, the council. Since they're they're supposedly protecting us, maybe it's the you know the safekeepers or something like that. The saving council. The, pr- the protectors. The protect- yes, the, the protecting the council. Oh, right, that's the warding the council. protectors. I'm good with that. The protect- okay, the protectors. So the people, yeah, they, they act like they're protecting everybody. That's good. I like that. No, I mean, clearly they are protecting us, right? They, they're not lying. No, they're they, lying. not at all. Of course not. No. It's crazy. Okay. That's so why they use no, okay, so the, It's called the protection description. Basically, the... Uh, what, uh, so what is it? Basically, uh, a council which controls the, uh, the underground. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so now let's see. Now here's the vice. The authority's vice is the underlying motivation. What is why does it do what it does? What is the root of its fucked up shit that is engaging in? <laughs> so let's see. There's sadism, basically a sadistic authority gets off by causing pain to its people. It could be physical, psychological, both. Greed, the authority is driven by insatiable hunger. This could be more for money, but also for acquisitions or controlling people. Fear, they basically, you know, scare the hell out of people and, uh, you know, make them so afraid that they don't want to, that they obey the rules. Stability, they want to create a perfect society of some kind, although it's not necessarily perfect. Utopianism, uh, they think they know what's best for you. And that um, can, I'm, yeah. I'm leaning towards fear, especially if we're going with the idea that they already know it would be safe for us to go back above ground. Totally. Okay. So oh, maybe nice. they're maybe they're building something above ground for themselves, and they're trying to make it like like already oh, yeah. 
hierarchy. Yeah, and there yeah, that's like that's where the like really rich and affluent and pretty people all go. Right. Yes. You don't want you don't want those other people there. They'll okay. dirty it. Oh so, yeah. So basically, so you're telling propaganda, saying like if you're on the surface, it's irradiated and deadly. There's plagues and all that. You'll get killed. Yeah. So yes, yeah, better stay down and stay down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but actually, they're they're scared of us, right? Yes. Yeah. Totally. Of course. That's why they have to keep us down. Yes. So okay, so the Vistage. Uh, so okay, so there's corporate corporations. So it, it could be a business or like a large uh, corporation which runs this. It could be religious. So basically, some religious cult of some kind runs this. It's uh, basically a religion. Uh, personal is one like uh, one guy which it doesn't fit really because we have a council. Although there could be one guy. Head of council, the council of one. Well, they could more operate in a more mafia-based system than a, yes. a strict organization okay. system. And then here's one which which could be. There's also systematic, which doesn't have a face, but in this case we do because we said the council is the is kind of the face. So yeah. I think the best one would be corporate, uh, religious, or, or state. personal, or yeah, the state. Or. I don't, uh, I think the state makes sense. Yes, yeah, oh yeah, the whole yeah. state. Too, yes. The group of bandits you've chosen to lead you slowly. <laughs> for legitimate reasons of power. Yeah. No, that sounds about right. They're supposed to be in charge. Right. This reason. is the system that should be protecting us and serving us. Yes. This is hitting way too close to home right now. Yeah. <laughs> Something about this feels very real. Okay. Yeah. Don't okay. mind us, everybody. That means it's working. Do you hear me, NSA? Okay. So now we have to decide the victim. The victim is whatever the authority is killing, consuming, ruining, perverting, controlling, or, or uh, fucking up. And also, one thing you actually should do with the um, with the victim is that if things consider the way they are with authority, that something bad is going to happen. So also, you should also think about that too. Like, what if if nothing is done? What will the what will authority uh, end up causing? Sure. Yes. But anyway, here's the idea. Humanity. Choose up uh, people somehow. It usually means killing them. Sometimes it means enslave them or trading their sanity. Nature. The authority commits crimes against nature, the world, animals, plants, and natural processes. History. Uh, these people control uh, what books are put out. Uh, and you could say that, that hit, America was a big empty wasteland, way for people to come and build strip malls. Progress. Why change things? Everything is fine just the way it is. Uh, you usually want to stop technology and get out of the hands. Also, get so squeak to uh, social change, like the wrongs of combination of people getting away with kissing each other. Freedom. Freedom of choice, speech, religion, or press, and movement. All these things are anathema to the authority. So which uh, victim do you think uh, affects well, the The history of progress would seem most most logical with our, with our uh, okay. current setup. Uh... I don't know. They want to. They want to stop. They want to st stop us from spreading onto the surface. Yeah, they yes. want to keep the general yeah. purpose on the uh, ground. But so freedom. It sounds, it sounds more like freedom to me. Like, is there? Well, they're stopping well, us from what's, moving. What's what's what, what what would it constitute if you set up a civilization on the on the on 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 the surface? Um, I mean, technically, nothing is stopping you, them. You're not necessarily unfree in their society on the ground. They just don't want you to go above ground. So I'd say the well, progress, the progress of, of civilization expanding but, is what's. But the, but they're expanding their own civilization up there. I mean, yes. that's the thing. That's like saying that yeah, you're perfectly free to do anything you want as long as you don't publish anything saying the government is bad. You're perfectly free otherwise, and that means you're not free. Well, they, they, they aren't stopping you from digging deeper on the ground. They aren't stopping you from, from saying that the government is bad. They are saying... But they are yeah, stopping you. Yeah, but they are stopping you. Technically, you don't know you're not free. That's what he's saying. Yeah. 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 But we do know that we're not allowed to make any progress on the surface. We're not allowed to expand our civilization to but grow. Right. This, this isn't from the point of view of our characters, right? right. This, is, yes. this is like background overview. Yes. This is at a it, high could, it could be in some ways, but yes, generally, yeah, this is the, the background of like what the civilization, what okay. is the, the victim, I, I see what you're who, so who the, is affected the most, like who is negatively by the sure. authority. So the, the worst thing that could happen is somebody makes the technology to, to go above ground uh, and find out the to, truth to that the authorities have been lying to them. Right. 
Yeah. So they're stopping, you know, any any research or, or anything, you know, yeah. trying to go up. Yes, and you know, any, just start, like any like uh, like the just get for any like science which might actually prove that the surface is safe. Mm. Right, yes. right, right. Yeah. Cool. So progress is the victim, I guess. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's see the need. Okay, the need. This is essentially what the authority wants and what will happen to get to get it. So basically, the authority wants basically to to have their own paradise for like their chosen few on the surface, and then basically keep everybody down, everybody else down in the uh, the dumps of the underground for uh, maybe for some time. But eventually, they might actually like. Uh, the bad thing might happen that eventually they decide that once they've established enough on the surface and got everything off the underground, the place is just, you know, wiped the underground out pretty much, like, you know, cause some you know, environmental failure and basically, you know, wipe out all the other people. So only they are in charge. That could be a possible future. Well, I, I wouldn't say that they necessarily kill everyone just just to be safe. They're, you know, living people are more useful to authoritarian... Yes. And, uh, yeah, detect- okay, but that also the creates the... Uh, another option could be that basically they want to keep everyone in, kind of enslaved, like building and yeah. producing, and then basically yeah. everyone, the, the rich people, the people with the, the privileged people live on the surface on the backs of the laborers in the underground. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's another option not, too. Yeah. Yeah. Rich enslaved? Is that the thing? They're going to, like... What's going to change that we have to stop? Well, right? it sort it, it might make sense if like there are machines running down here that are, we're told are keeping us alive, but they're actually running everything on the surface more and more and more as they build up their surface stuff. So we are we're enslaved, but we don't think so because it's for our own survival yeah. ostensibly, but it's really not. Okay, but the the point of a need is it's, sure. it's a threat. It's you know something is going to change right now. So, sure. And if, and if we're not there to stop it, then some horrible thing happens. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I get it. Okay, okay, I get it. Right. So, so what what is the thing we're trying to keep from happening? Right. What, what is the authority? They need this it? to happen, and we're going to prevent that. Got it. Well, I think the eventually they'll like. Uh, then, then you're just going to have a total divide of society that completely, like, uh, currently they're just building the surface and they really need the people, but what, beyond that, uh, you're mm-hmm. just going to have the slaves and the and the rulers, pretty much. They need like, us to be ignorant. Yes, yes. Yeah, so they could be destroying all our sources of information. Yes. Yeah. So, like, you know, no one's allowed to, to pursue science, no one's allowed to pursue engineering, and anything yeah. like that it would allow us to become educated and nice. knowledgeable of, of things like that. Yeah, that's good. All right. So they're gonna, like, they're gonna wipe out our tools and our books. Yes. And turn yeah. us into livestock. They're taking away our Wikipedia. Oh God. <laughs> All right. Cool. Now that's something I can I can you know press <laughs> you can, stop. I can get behind. Yes. Yeah. So they need to wipe out. All our knowledge. What time of, of the future is this? Is this like future technology? Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it could be like uh, you could be very abstract with this, pretty much. Like some distant future, pretty much. But, like, but, but, like, you're but asking about like technology level, correct? Yeah. Yes. Like, we have books versus space age stuff. Yeah. So I, I I'd say we don't have they don't space travel, but they might have some uh, some limited uh, you know, machines. Like your electronics could still be way, way there in the future, rather than having, you know, just yeah. knives and books. I'd and, say yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much, uh, you know, modern day, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, after the apocalypse. So, you know, technology, it's maybe it's a little rarer. It's harder to to get the electricity to run it and whatever. Um, so there's still books and stuff. But I one thing I want to see is like, uh, you know, they yeah, well, and- monitor <clears throat> with with uh, TV cameras and drones and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, and maybe it depends on... Um, it was in London now. Um, yeah. Not, not quite those... Uh, I mean, they have TV cameras everywhere, and it's only a matter of time before they stick a few on a drone, so... Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Maybe it depends on where you are in the society, too. Like, the better, like, more affluent you are, maybe you have that access to technology, whereas, like, the really, really poor parts of the underground, they are still on, like, candles and paper and books. Sure. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. No. No. No indoor plumbing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
the race of course some wells up they still have to feed and you know give the water yeah. to yeah. right but uh, they probably just get the worst you know stuff like rations and uh and like you know well water pretty much underground water cool yeah yeah. So all the food must be like must be you know evolved into like an underground species at this point, right? So like there's no cows pasturing. Yes, no. There's basically a mushrooms probably would be uh, one sort of thing. Things can grow underground. Uh, probably like some giant earthworms of some kind. Moles are a delicacy. So actually, yeah. so the next part is figuring out this kind of thing, right? What? How do they control us? And then mm -hmm. how can we? Uh, what are their weaknesses? Yes, well, that's actually comes to the next thing. First of all, the right. system, we have to get to the system control. Basically, yep. we got to decide on four things which the authorities use to keep the uh, keep the undergrounders down. So you said cameras. Yes, yes, that was the surveillance. Yes, you you, you have to be more punchy than that, though. Like, what sort of uh, something? Drones. Yeah, okay. Um, I like drones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, the silver drones. Each person gets to create one, right? Yes. I can. Uh, well, I you said it. four things, and there are five. Yes, because you generally, generally, well, we could do more than that. Generally, you do, you pick four things for system control, and then the PCs get one exploit. And then basically, as a game, if you're actually playing a long-term game of this, basically, uh, the goal, one way to of the end game is that the P, that the Yos have to convert all the system controls into exploits, and if they do that, they've won. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So basically, so basically, four. We could do more if we want, but four seems by is okay. the general amount of system of control you have. So we have surveillance drones as one system of control. What's another system of control to keep the populace down? I like the uh, rationing idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Very good. Very good. Definitely. Yeah. So if you if you do something they don't like, you get worse and worse. No food for you. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. But on the other hand, if you uh, get in their good graces, maybe you get bumped yeah, up. Yes, so you get like, you get worse yeah, products. Yeah, you get to eat them real yeah, so if, you sell, if you sell traders <laughs> like that, you basically you can get uh, you can you can get more food and supplies. Yeah, and maybe even advance uh, further in society too. Okay, so uh, what else? Uh, how does the uh, does authority use to keep keep the, the populace down? What if, do they have like a, a new? I mean, I don't know if that that works. Okay, but. one thing we did we needed some sort of enforcement force, some kind of police force or something like that, uh, or some secure internal security force. But they should have a sinister name like the Repo Man or the. Uh... Yeah, we should we should stick with that whole theme of protection though. Okay. Yeah, yeah remember they're the good guys. They also stationed there for our protection, but how do they? Protect us. Do they go around with nightsticks and, yeah. and stab fests? Yes. Like, yeah, they should right. happen to death. Right. Or do what we actually when, uh, deploy rifles? Well, they, uh, uh, see on the surface, and... they say that they're there to help us, but in in behind the that they're basically brutal like thugs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. So let's see. Uh, we'll call them oh, uh, see, because enforcers, protect. Let's say protectors. What should we call them? We already had the name of it. Was called protectors, but what should we call their kind of the enforcement police, the law enforcement? What if they're called angels? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and how how do these angels work? Are they just people in fancy costumes, or uh, they're basically the law enforcement, so they they're yeah. right Wood police who have angel wings angels. like painted on their back. Uh, yeah. On their, well, I'm thinking like they they wouldn't have angel wings, so that'd be kind of you know bulky. Instead, they have like wings painted on their on the front of their armor, kind of. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking they also have back. like like yeah. like jetpacks. And on their back too. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, jetpacks. There you go. Good. Yeah. With jetpacks, yes. <laughs> oh weird, weird, weird. Okay. Way to so work I'm, that in there. Picturing this this underground area is not all just um like mine mine shafts, right? It's like some open caverns yes. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's why that's why they can use these jetpacks. Usually yeah. you only have to right. jump like uh, a few hundred feet, but that's still more than you right. can possibly yeah. reach. Hmm. Right. With normal equipment. That's like an underground city where they have like the layers and layers and layers of houses going all yes. the way up. Yes. Okay. And there's just vertical shafts. Yeah, there's like which, yeah, there's a, a few, you know, larger and shafts. With the jetpacks you can just jump from floor to floor to floor. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we have one more uh, mode of control which we have to decide on. What about a news system? Mm. Ah, yes, a propaganda. Propaganda? System. Yes. 
Yeah, but what what kind of propaganda? I mean, is it just uh, you know, is it don't go to the surface? It's very very bad up there, or is it actually hi, welcome to the underground? Life is great yeah, down that, here. That. You don't need like, to yeah, go to the surface. Absolutely. Okay, we gotta come up with a punchy name for that though. The weather uh, service. Yeah, nice. The weather <laughs> service. <laughs> That's nice. That's perfect. Today on the surface, it, gives you, it periodically gives you, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. The I news, like it gives you little little it. reports of like surface temperature and stuff, and it's always like you know two hundred. Ten million degrees, degrees in the shade. <laughs> yes. It's raining acid and possibly yeah. nuclear bombs. But underneath, okay. it's a full fifty degrees. But it's always you know <laughs> gradually, like gradually <laughs> getting sky. slightly better. It's like oh we're you know oh, there's a little bit of hope for uh, you know oh, no. more cloud cover today or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of cloud cover today, and that means you might not burn to death to, uh, if you go up the surface. Okay. Wait a yeah. second. So should... say on, on forces of control, so these uh, yeah. these are what the what the authorities use to keep the uh, keep the the people down. Now the exploits. So basically, the exploit is what uh, the uh, undergrounders could use against the authority in order to fight back. So you gotta come up with one thing which the Dude. which uh, the authority which the undergrounders can actually use against the authority. Uh, do we get we get only one at this yes, point? Yes, you right? get only one at this point because uh, oh yes you get I'll one. Make it a good one. Yes, because you st you pretty much uh, that's kind of how the game works if you're actually running a long term campaign is that yeah. you have one exploit because you basically start on the bottom end the wrong basically oh, the authority has all the has has most of so the, the system control in place and you have like one way to fight back. Apparently the um the the players are supposed to come up with the system control and then the authority comes up with the exploit. Mm. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, an exploit. So, John, do you want to do you want to come up with an exploit well, for us? Well, how about we offer suggestions and he picks the one which seems the most fun. Yeah, okay, to yeah, I want to take suggestions here. So um, we have a lot of uh, robotics around, so perhaps we could use some sort of oh, uh, yeah. that the system is is very hackable, that it's very easy to break into and then work from the inside. So uh, we're alternatively, we're all on the ground, so the cave system could be like these. Yeah, there could be an enormous areas. maze. Yeah, that, that there's always some place to hide. Okay, uh, I actually do like that. There's the uh, the hidden cave systems, which uh, the undergrounders know because they work it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can uh, we can organize that way and and hide from the surveillance. Hmm. Nice. I like that one. Uh, you have the hidden cave That's systems. Good. Yes, of course. Um, the, the way this game sort of works is if we actually do a long-term campaign, is that if the authority actually wins the um, the climax, uh, he uh, they basically get rid of the exploits that the PCs have. So it works both ways. So if basically if you win the win the climax, you basically get rid of the system control. But if the authority wins, they take one away one of your exploits. So it's take. Um, Tug of war, basically, kind of. Yes, sort of like that. But we're just doing one uh, one shot right now. So, mm -hmm. cool. anyway, so that's uh, that covers that. So next, we have to come up with our yos. So we have. I actually have yo, the record. Yo sheet. means y o or youth youth offender, right? Yes, um, yos. Okay. Are youth offenders, yeah, useful offenders. Clarify. So I've already claimed player box five. Okay, so basically, perhaps we, we should all those. claim a player box with our respective hangout yes, so. uh, toolbox colors. So basically, you should be between 12 and 70 years of age. You say your, your name, your age, your sex, and your description. Like, you know, basically like one line description of what you look like. Okay. And there's also uh, your traits. These are the things which you actually use to, uh, when you're actually in the conflict with the authority. So let's see. First of all, all there is, is I explained what they are. First of all, you have your uh, mistreatment. Uh, which is basically, uh, you wouldn't be a, uh, a yo if you didn't mis be mistreated in some way. So, uh, basically, that is the nature of mistreatment. So, there is abused, uh, so you're a victim of uh, some kind of abuse, neglected, you're an orphan, or your parents don't really pay attention to you, or you're fostered, like you're adopted uh, for caregivers or something like that. You're spoiled. You're basically a spoiled little rich kid of some kind. Uh, you you you're part. You're basically a child of someone who's affluent, but you're kind of rebelling against them and sheltered. Um, Where is this list? Sheltered is basically uh, 
you're ne- basically you're never really burdened with decisions, it says. Uh, so it's actually on page ten of the book. Yeah. What average age are we like around? Supposed to be? Are we teenagers or twenties or? Uh, yeah. twelve and seventeen. You can be whatever age you want. Okay. Look at that. But you are a youth. I'm the weird thirty year old hanging out with all the young guys. <laughs> no, you can't be partially. <laughs> Because uh, the part of this game is that youth rebel against the man. So, yes. Okay. And then motivation is like what motivates you to fight against the authority. So there's outrage, which you really just hate the righteous anger against the authority. Pride. And you want to put up the shit. Altruism. Uh, you have a need to help people in trouble. Uh, optimism. You think uh, the world wasn't meant to be this, and you want to change it. Thrills as your addicted to danger. And also, one thing you're going to write next to it is also uh, the alternate thing, which is uh, your sellout uh, trait. Because when you sell a... Because basically, uh, in the conflict, if the authority wins, you can either let the authority win and basically let the authority do what they want, or you can do a sellout. And, if you, and if, when you do a sellout, one of your traits turns into the alternate trait. Because you become more I, of the authority. I still don't quite get how the system uh, works, but but yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty easy Sorry. to. Uh, yes, I will explain once we get to a conflict. Uh, Can we, we go over that again from the from the top? Yeah. So yes, we're please. Supposed to, we're supposed to create a clique first, which is a kind clique. of yeah, clique. Yeah, clique. The kind of. Um, the kind yeah, because you'll know each other. Yes. The kind of gang that. Yeah. That, uh, oh, okay. Yes. True. So we have to. Then we'll so come we up to... with with individuals in that should in the be in the gang, and then we can yeah. pick from those, you know, which yeah. we want to play. Yeah. So so what kind of click would be down here, in the uh, in the underground, taking it to the man? It's almost snakes rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Spelunkers. Oh, I like that the Spelunkers. Um, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're you're some sort of click who makes you you know go ready. cave diving and ex- exploring the caves and all that. But also, are curious about what's on the surface too. There you go. That gives us a good thing. reason. Yes. Interesting. So we're like we're kind of like explorers, right? We yes. Wanna, yeah, we we're push cave the explorers. We're yes. The lunkers. Yes. The explorers. Yes. Nice. All right. Cool. Explorers come up with something. Uh... I like the spelunkers better. <laughs> that sounds more. Uh... Yeah, but spellunkers don't usually go up, so... Well, it it doesn't really matter. So then it says, uh, brainstorm a bunch of uh, youth offender character concepts that should be part of the the click. Treat it like your TV writers figuring out who your recurring cast should be. What jobs need to be filled in the group? Quote-unquote jobs. Uh, What kind of personalities ought to be played in order to underscore the themes suggested by the exploit and the systems control? Hmm. So we can just come up with like a bunch of guys, and then from those we can we can pick, pick yeah. which sounds One interesting to us. Yep. So obviously we need a, a climber, somebody who actually uh, knows how to how to uh, use use spelunking and climbing equipment. Yes, that's easy but enough. Uh, because, need to yeah, I think it's called a stick, and one of the sticks could be you know expert climber or something like that. Your stick is basically what you're you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so an expert climber. What else? So I'm thinking this should be one person. Well, this is the character I th- I thought I was I was thinking of because I was sure. just thinking of it in my head. Um, sure. Someone that is uh, really like um, so you've, like say you've got a bunch of people that are really like you know um, rebellious and all that, but there's always that one timid character that is helpful for some reason, but never is like gung ho. Always is you know worried about what's going to be the outcome of the situation. The voice of reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perhaps. Well, not not necessarily reason, but more the 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 voice of caution, the voice of mm-hmm. uh, the, the Debbie Downer. <laughs> so the Debbie. Yeah. Down. Okay. What else? Uh, well, there's got to be um, somebody in charge, right? We got to have somebody who's like uh, just, just a know, big person. About, yeah. T- like oh, in charge. The most the most outspoken, the most like, all right, here's what we're gonna do. You do this. You do this. So the leader. So the, yeah, yeah, the leader. leader right? Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Um, the uh, other character, just the the medic, yeah. Just, but, um, 
<clears throat> the mother character, the one who takes care of everybody sure. else. Yeah, yeah. That Packs lunches sense. and so forth. <laughs> the caregiver, yeah, that sounds good. Caregiver, hmm. Cool. Uh, what, what else? For... Uh, we just, oh, the gung ho, the the pusher, the man who's always going. We 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 shouldn't just do this. We should also be doing this. The one that doesn't yeah, care the, about reason. Yeah, the the yeah. opposite of the timid person. The psycho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the psycho. Yeah, that's good. Yes, uh, that's a good one to take. Th- uh, a thrills is a good one to take for him. Yep. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Oh, that sells up the nihil- uh, nihilistic, and that can be scary. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, at this rate, we'll probably have more than five characters, so we're going to end up either dropping or combining various people. Well, right. uh, it's not yeah. about. It can also be like just NPCs. You know, yes. We don't pay yeah. to be, you know, the, yeah. the back background cast. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The background cast sort of is done later. Right now, we're just doing the 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 yos. Because yeah, that mean, was, uh, cause you're going to have what are called friendship questions, and you that's when you start building like what characters will show up during the game. True. Oh, okay. What yeah, about like um, two or three people that um, get into like get into trouble, but are always like um, I'm trying to think how to describe it? They, just have they somehow always jump the loop or something. What, uh... Like they always skirt off to the side. They get away from the pack and get into trouble and stuff that always messes everything up. The one of these. The wannabes, the guys who, who who think they're spelunkers, but they but when right. the when the point comes to <laughs> shove, they 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 they're too scared of the authority to actually do anything. And they're just punks. Yeah, punks. Uh, there should totally be. There needs to be like the if there's a leader, there needs to be the opposite of a leader. There needs to be a Raphael to the Leonardo. Uh, mm. Because that's clearly the right reference to make. So there needs to be somebody Obviously. who's really somebody who's who's more than anybody else super angry with the authority and like keeps pushing everybody. To, oh yes, there's actually a yeah, uh, outrage, which actually fits pretty well with that. Right, the person that takes it from just a group of people who are splunking to right turning it somehow against the authority. And they're yeah. not the leader; like they suck at organizing, but they're great at yeah. instigating. Oh uh, okay. yes, yes. So I, I phrase that as the power behind the throne or the brains of the outfit. Sure. No, no, that 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 that, I, that would be a separate character. That's this is someone who who's more vocally. He, I, I'd say that the person behind the throne was more of a, uh, a th- yeah. Well, the brains behind the outfit is the one who thinks of the plans that the boss wants to do. You know, the Raphael yeah. says, "I want to do something," and then the boss says, "Well, well, then we could do this," and then the brain says, "Well, this is how we could do it." So, That's good. Oh, but the okay. brains, the brains is still a good one. The brains is a good alternative. Yep. The brains is Donatello. Okay. Cool. <laughs> We're using the Ninja Turtles <laughs> metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> cool. As long as you get all four turtles, you're good. And all we right. do. Have, we have a Michelangelo. He's the thrill seeker. So. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've got enough uh, archetypes probably sure. to. to yeah, pick so you just gotta decide which one archetype you gonna play. But uh, not, not that many skills yet, so... Well, so, so we go back through the archetypes and we say which one interests us when it interests us, right? Yeah, yeah so there's the retreatment, motivation, the means. Space. I didn't describe what the means are exactly. The means is how you fight back against authority. Uh, the stick is basically what you're good at. Like, you're, if you're good at slugging, you can take slugging as a skill. And a glitch is basically your fatal flaw. But even your glitch can help you out because sometimes your glitch might be a, have a positive side to it. But also, it's the glitch which uh, makes you human, pretty much. It's well, also the last thing you can sell out, too. If you sell your glitch, your character is gone, pretty much. Oh. Yes, you're, yes you sell your glitch, and you're pretty much a nerf. You're, you, you become one with authority. <laughs> so so let's go back through our the character concepts and pick the ones that we're each going to take. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so we had our expert climber who knows how to use the equipment, the expert spelunker. Who did anybody want to grab that? Okay. Uh, I, I like that one, actually. All right, Aaron, oh, yeah. you're our the, expert climber. The guy. I cool. know, I freaking know what I'm doing. You freaking know what you're doing. Um, we had the voice of reason, voice of caution, Debbie Downer, uh, helpful type. Anybody want to snag that? I think I'll take that one. Awesome. Uh, we had the leader, the one who's in charge, at large. 
because they go together large and in charge. Uh, uh, no, okay. Uh, I'm tempted, but I'm also holding out for for the psycho. So. <laughs> the psycho. All right. So, well, I, I think I'll, I'll stick with the bossy type, and then if if gung ho isn't uh, isn't taken by the end of this, you can role, always combine uh, them. Yeah. You can be a gung ho yeah, I mean, leader. It can be, yeah, it can be totally combined. Uh, all right. So you, you want to be a gung-ho leader. That's awesome. Uh, what about the uh, caregiver mother medic character? I can do that. All right. Right on. Uh, then we had the gung-ho, the thrill seeker, the psycho, but you want to combine that with the leader. That's cool. Um, we had the... the Power wannabe. behind the throne? We had the wannabes, the yeah. outrager, and the brains of the outfit. Yeah, the, the power behind yeah. the throne. Um, I'm looking at what you have for... Ethan Sparks, uh, Damien. Da- I just I want to make sure. I apologize. I want to make sure I get this right. So I'm saying it right. It's Damien. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to not say Damien. Then I apologize. Uh, so I see that you're a book nerd, and anything you can get your hands on through literature. So so you're thinking you're already going to be sort of a brains type character, right? Yeah. There's actually a, a one called Smart you can take for your. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So so then you can have that sort of the brains of the outfit thing. And I will go for then the uh, I'll go for the the outrager. Yeah, that works for me. I'll go for the one who's really angry. <laughs> <laughs> now, then, uh, you got no, a okay. shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Was that? Um, so I'm just thinking. Um, Damian, maybe you're you you have all the the like facts type type knowledge, uh, you know book book learning and history and that knowledge, yeah. Uh, uh, so I was thinking maybe I'm an expert climber, but I also kind of know the the culture uh, of sort of, sort of the cultural history of our our little group and like who everybody is and and um, you know plus how to climb and like why you know why we do things a certain way down here. Mm. The contact sort that makes of. Sense. That's kind of yeah. cool. The guy who knows guys. Yeah, I, I know everybody, and I like I know how to not only how to climb, but like how to uh, kind of avoid the the cameras and like where the best hiding places are and stuff like that. Yeah. Get your cool? fingers in everything. Ah. All right. So we, we should fill in our name, our age, our sex, and our description. Yeah. Then pick your traits. Yeah, her name doesn't necessarily have to be your real, your character's real name. You could have a nickname, too. How, how do you actually pick the traits? Uh, you basically, there is a list of traits there. Yeah. Okay, so you start off with... Uh, with uh, Mistreatment is basically uh, why you're how you why you're actually a rebel, pretty much because mm-hmm. uh, you're trying to. Uh, well, what do you put in the boxes? You put the name of the of the actual like uh, mistreatment. So the choice of mistreatment are abused, neglected, fostered, spoiled, and sheltered. So you choose one of those, and then. Uh, what you do is um, you don't Where need to put in, then then put in sold is basically what have, would happen if you if uh, you sell out that trait, what your trait becomes. Like for instance, abused becomes abusive, neglected becomes misanthropic, um, fostered becomes uh, cold, spoiled becomes selfish, and sheltered becomes dependent. I think we may be looking at different editions of the rules because the Misspent Youth I Bleed edition doesn't have mistreatments on it. Uh, no, that's one I have. What page are you on? Uh, page nine. Uh, I see the Vodka Cousin Drugies on that one. Like the surface. Yep. Yeah, Name that's definitely and... what I see too. You must have a different version than I do. I just took the one off the site. That's the one we're looking at. Yeah, that's at. what I've got open. Okay, let me take a look at that. Uh, maybe you have a different version than that I do. Yeah. 
Okay, so what's the link to it there? Did you give the link? I'll, I just sent it again. Okay, maybe he's done some updates to it. Maybe I have an older copy, because this yeah. is one of my hard drive, not on my... Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let the edition wars begin. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> not a good game until... Yeah, we have edition wars, yes. Because I know he's done some rewrites, because I remember playing this at uh, a convention, and I noticed that, this, that some of the traits were named differently. Mistreatment, mistreatment motivation means shtick and glitch. Okay, I, I think I'm an older version of it, that's why. And then he's got, in this version, he's got means, motive, opportunity, MO, and disorder. Yes. So it looks like some of those map probably pretty closely. So the, yeah. the mistreatment is probably the disorder. Yes. Motivation is motive. Means is means. Yeah. Shtick, right. shtick is MO. Oh, no, glitch is probably disorder. Means, motive, opportunity. So maybe opportunity instead of mistreatment. That may be the difference. And glitch is probably disorder. Yeah, you may have to change that. Sorry about that. Sure, no worries. I'll actually see this version, actually, because it looks like this is a newer version of what I had. Okay. okay. Not a problem. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to list them in the order in the book. And... Yeah. You crazy, crazy man. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's what. So I'll save that. I definitely want the most recent version. So... <laughs> All right, so we should have opportunity, or motive, means, MO, and disorder. Yeah. And doing them in slightly weird order because screw you. Yeah. Um, I see how you're going to be. And three of these are closed, which means we have to choose from the specific list. And two of these are open, which means we can fill them in pretty much however the heck we want. Yeah. So we have to choose for uh, means one of the listed options. All right. So you can be right the free or sold conviction pair. Okay. So right. you can be bad. So you're the bad kid, the outcast, the leather jacket wearer. Uh, you specialize at ostentatiously, ostentatiously breaking the rules, uh, but you sell out to perverse. So you now engage in prof profoundly fucked up behavior and a compulsive need to break every boundary. Right. Or you can be cool. People want to be with you. Uh, you break new ground constantly when you talk to people, make them feel important. But cool sells out to Trindy. Uh, fast. So you have agility, athleticism, quick-wittedness. You're fast in every sense of the word. Fast sells out to efficient. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing, you have to, one thing in this game you have to do is that when you sell something out, you have to tell how you're using that sell out trait to actually beat the authority. Like, for instance, if you're doing oh, bad, nice. if you're trying to, like, uh, if you're cool and you want to sell the trendy, how is being trendy going to actually get you out of the situation? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can be smart. It's so cool to be in with the authority, man. The council is so way awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So you can be smart, uh, so you're a genius. Uh, some people know a lot about one thing. You know a lot about most things, are an expert in several areas. Uh, but smart sells out to pedantic. And uh, tough, you're a badass, able to dish out and take physical punishment, able to shrug off the authorities' psyops. Tough sells out to vicious. Yeah. All right, so going through those again, uh, we had bad, cool, fast, smart, and tough. This is for means. Uh, yeah. So what's everybody taking? I'm taking cool, man. Can Wait. we have uh, duplicates, or do we need to yeah, have one? Yeah, you can duplicate if you want. Yeah, I can. You can duplicate if you want. I guess we go with smart. That makes sense. I'm trying to pick between bad and tough. <laughs> It's so hard. I know. Um, I guess I will go with fast for mine. Nice, nice. Yeah, fast is always good. What are you thinking, Lucas? Yeah, I remember I've uh, actually oh, seen uh, oh, in the actual oh, game of fast being so good. You don't think. Basically. <laughs> well, gosh, you're making this difficult on me if you're going to take the one I'm not going to take, because I was going to take the one you weren't going to take. <laughs> <laughs> Right, then I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with 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 tough. All right, so then I'm bad. 
Yeah. That works just fine. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, this cool. Is perfect. And so then make sure you got this, the, the second one, the sold out version, the sold out conviction, just listed. Um, so bad is perverse, cool is trendy, fast is efficient, smart is pedantic, and tough is vicious. Oops. Sweet. I'm sorry, I just zoned out for a second. What was smart? Pedantic. Okay. Yes, you're basically a know-it-all. Yeah. An annoying know-it-all. They're correct. Oh, I can play that very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's uh, so right. you really want to sell out. So now we got to get through, uh, we got to do motive, which okay. is uh, the reason that we don't do what the authority tells us to. Yeah. Um, what makes you so special? Yes. And so, so go ahead, go ahead, Aaron. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, I won't go into them probably. I'll just summarize real quick. So altruism, uh, you have a, a biting need to come to the aid of anyone who might need it, uh, and all these can be sold out as well. Um, uh, and then optimism, so you can see a way through to a better world, and you're sure you can make it happen. Uh, outrage, you're filled with a pure righteous anger. Injustice drives you bug fuck, and you won't sit still for it. Uh, pride, you know you're a worthwhile person who doesn't have to put up with this shit. Thrills, uh, you're addicted to danger and nothing beats counting coup on the authority. Uh, I think that's it. I'll, yeah. I'll claim altruistic since it kind of goes with my uh, background here. Yeah. Is there anything, any way you can copy paste that so I can actually look at those? Yeah. Or, oh, you have the PDF, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'll just open that up. What page? 14. Uh, uh, 14 no, uh, and, uh, 11. 11. It says 11 on the bottom, but it's 14 in the PDF. Because PDFs are annoying like that. <laughs> oh. Mine doesn't for some reason. Oh, I see. It's Mine's automatically adjusting. Sweet. <laughs> Ooh. It's hiding it from you. It's learning. I'm taking outrage, because fuck yeah, I'm filled with pure rage and anger. <laughs> Fuck this place. Hmm. I don't know if I want thrills or pride. Come on, you're cool. It's totally got to be pride. Come on. <laughs> we don't have to put up with the shit. You're sweet. You're a like cool kid. You're like, fuck yeah, I can climb. Yeah, confident. Yes. Well, it sells off the arrogant. Yeah, that makes sense <laughs> to me. All right. So everybody got one? Um, yeah, what do we? What do you got for Ethan Sparks? Don't you? I'm on 11. I don't see it. What are these called again? These are... Um, motive. Motive. They're close convictions. It'll be in the convictions section. They're in the uh, yeah right column. Okay, I see. Let's see. Hmm. I think optimism might be good. Nice. You're the smart one. <laughs> I, if anyone can see a way to the better world, I buy it to you. Until Aww. you're wrong. <laughs> I'm never wrong. You guys are always wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that part. Thank you for reminding me. I'm not pedantic yet. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> and uh, Lucas, what do you what do you want to take? Uh, which one is left? The only one that's left is is Slayer of Thrills, which I think is really, really, really bad fit for me. So I think I'm doubling up on either. Uh, Outrage or uh, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna go with outrage. All right. Okay. And then opportunity. Uh, you're able to be up in the middle of the night on a school night, plotting the downfall of the government, or spray painting slogans on the windshields of expensive vehicles. What is it about you that causes the authority to overlook you? They fail to see you in the, as the vital threat you are. Why aren't you dead or in jail yet? <laughs> so you maybe you're pretty. 
You're such an angel, so pretty nice. You could never do anything wrong. <laughs> uh, you, so you, in, you charm people. Uh, an orphan. You don't have parents, or your parents are zonked out and heedless, or you don't exist in the official records. Uh, rich. You're incredibly wealthy, able to buy your way past restrictions mm -hmm. and bribe officials. Uh, sneaky. You're really good at hiding your motives, getting around without being seen, and erasing your digital, digital tracks. Or trusted. The authority believes in you. Maybe your parents are trusted agents. Maybe you superficially fit its ideal of what a young person should be. I'm going to take sneaky. Nice. I'm going to take orphan. Nice. I'm dubbing between so rich and Annie trusted. At the group. What was that? You're the orphan Annie at the group. Yep. <laughs> so I, I want to be uh, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta sing it. Back pocket at all times. What were you flipping between, Lucas? Uh, rich and trusted. I'm thinking I might I go. go. I think I'm. Uh, hmm. I'm thinking I might go trusted. But that doesn't really make sense. I'm trying to think about it in the sense of like. No, um, you can't take multiples of aunt. Right. Can't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna go with trusted. You're the leader, Brendan? I'm the Raphael. Mm. I'm the bossy one. Okay, so you wanna I'm not sure who rich work it exactly. Maybe well this your, context your really means you're it's not necessarily you have money, but you you know, maybe you've stored up a bunch of rations. Whatever currency. Or, uh, uh, it could be that, or it could be that your parents are, have a higher like position. They're not probably the uh, top yeah. authority, but they yeah. have like uh, in good administrative positions of some kind. Yeah, or maybe yeah. they're you they know, can get the rations gotta... to where where you want them to go, yeah. as opposed yeah. to to trusted, which uh, you know they they simply assume that you're you're doing their their bidding. I I think I made I'm just, I'm gonna take orphan. I'm gonna take orphan. How long does the actual game run? Uh, it's pretty fairly quick. It leaves you like two hours it runs. Perfect. Yes. Cool. Okay. It's basically uh, seven uh, scenes, pretty much. To open convictions, uh, which are just free, you can do anything um, and flesh out your character a bit. So your MO is uh, this conviction let's see, describes your main technique for beating the authority. So it could be a set of skills, a uh, quote unquote job, your. Um, could be your. Uh, concept from the casting phase, or something about your personality that really stands out. Uh, and then the disorder. Well, let's let's do mo. Do quick. mo first. Yeah, yeah. let's do yeah. one at a time. So, uh, is oh okay yeah so yeah mo so yeah how, what like, is what is the your thing skill you set do? so like yeah. splunking would be one the more you know. your your shtick of like yeah. Yeah. You're, guys. you're the insert mo here girl or guy yeah, yeah. I like that one. Um. <laughs> this is hard. All right, I got one. So obviously we have the expert climber who is an expert climber. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah. Right? yeah. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yep. The caregiver makes sense for Vic, Andrea. Okay. I think. I mean, I don't mean to tell you what to do. I, I oh no, no! I was just trying to think of a, like a clever way of phrasing it. You don't need it. to actually pick a soul for the open trait though, because that comes. You come up with that when you sell it out. Right. Yes. Oh, okay. The authority yes. gets to figure that out. Yes. And horribly distort it and make you a monster. Do you um, from a list, or this is just made up? This is just made up. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Whatever you want to uh, to be your know. thing. More educated than the authority. I like that. You know stuff. So they think they're smart, but not that smart. Fuck them. I can just talk circles around. Geology 101. Hey, nice. Oh, cool. Grease monkey. Grease monkey. Yes. With the... How does does that mean you drive around in a car, or do you actually make makeshift weapons or something? It like means that? I'm 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 a fucking mechanic. I I work ah. on everything mechanical, and that's what I've been doing my whole goddamn life. And that means I know how to fuck shit up. Cool. 
So the life support stuff, the drones. So you're literally, you're literally the wrench in the in the yes, in the, co- the, wrench, <laughs> the, wrench, the wrench in the works. Them. Yes. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Andrea, how does being a caregiver, how does that help you beat the authority? Uh, you, you could use it for many things, like uh, maybe treating injuries or something like that, or... Um, How about that? Yeah, like I said, I was trying to come up with a better way of phrasing it. So what, um, if, what if you're so valuable? Like much, when uh, a lot of these traits are very broad, so as so long as you can like uh, come up with a, with a way to uh, match them to the situation. So what, what were you saying, Tommy? It's pretty broad, you know. So whenever someone gets hurt, someone always says... Someone call a doctor because uh, you don't just find a doctor everywhere. So perhaps you're very valuable to them. I don't know. Yeah, I can right. see that. Caregiver yeah. refers to you being essentially kind of like a, a medic. Well, yeah, and it's not just um, the, what I was thinking is it's not just medical stuff. It's like people who need food or people who need mm-hmm. clothes or you know more of that almost smuggler esque aspect of oh, it. Nice. Is if oh, you need that's, something that's when they. When they uh, punish somebody, you can subvert that. Yep, yep. That's good. Around that. Sweet. That's good. All right, cool. And what do you got for Leo? Charisma. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, if I'm the bossy one, then I need some reason that people don't just go, oh, quit your bitch and uh, go back to work. So you and can turn on the charm. They, they want to please yeah. me. They, they kind of think, oh, he's... He's uh, okay. He's he's got something going on there. What a swell if I do guy. what I say, I can get in on this. He's like the guy everyone wants to hang out with. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I like it. He's, he's you're really you're really helping the authorities out. You're such a nice guy. Okay, Chris. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that could work. Yes. I like that. All cool. right. Uh, and then disorders. Yes, that's your fatal flaw. Disorders. You're sinking your armor. Although it can affect you, you can use it positively in challenges as well too. If you figure out a way to use it, okay. like if you if you could say if oh they're empathetic, like you're nice to people, but you're also like too kind to people at times. For yeah, instance, it does emphasize this is the last thing to go. It's kind of your core motivation, the ultimate innocence buried inside you. Okay. I'm still so, empathetic. Yeah, that makes sense for Vic. Somebody should be afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just be good. <laughs> that actually fits my character. <laughs> do it, do it. So I was thinking, kind of like too trusting of other of like bad people. I like that though too. That's good. Like naive. Yeah, like naive. That. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. Naive. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's good. All right. Hmm. Hmm. A fatal flaw. You are too cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes too much like uh, like cool in the in the means category. Yeah, Almost exactly. Like that, all of our super all emphasized. Of our, uh, all of our other convictions can already be sold out for, for something. Yeah. So yeah. I don't want to just like. Right. Oh, I'm I'm trendy. Well. No, you're so cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trendy yet. So, I don't know, man. Well, it can be something like, um, you're so used to being the cool one, the trendsetter, is that when push comes to shove, you don't listen to anybody else. Mm. You're Bold. condescending. Oh, yeah, too. You're very condescending towards people who aren't cool. Condescending. It's, that works too. Well, it's, it's not just condescending, though. It's... You know, you've you've determined the best thing to do is to rush in and attack those guards, and everyone else is like, no, and you're like, well, I'm going to do it anyway, and you're going to follow. I know you will. Wrong. That's kind of the psychos thing, though. That's true. It's kind of the yeah. pride. Well, it makes it sound like the psychos thing because the thing he's describing is psychotic, but. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just going home, right? If you were, just saying, if you were saying like, you no, know, the cool thing right now is to stay here and wait for a better opportunity, then I'm just, uh, yeah, Aaron, exactly. I just don't listen. So I'm, I'm just stubborn. When I, when I decide on a thing, it's like, that's what I want to do. Aaron, or what if you're a meathead, like a jock? Mmm. Sure. That, that fits in. There. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Stubborn, stubborn works for that. 
Like, I'm not coming up with a good one. Uh huh. Well, you're the you're like the the guy who stirs up trouble, but yeah. you can't actually do it by yourself. Like you have to stir up trouble and get other people on board. Well, so then that means that my disorder should be that I'm a loner, because then that's the problem. The thing that gives me difficulty is that I can't be a loner to nice. get make this work. I mean, I, I you're, you're absolutely right. I really like that take on it. So the the problem should be that that does not come naturally to me. I have to force my way into that. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't like you, you don't like relying on other people. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. I don't like relying on. I'm I'm still gonna say loner because yeah. it's just one yeah, word, yeah. but that's I think that's the best way to phrase it is that I really yeah. I have to rely on people. I, I would say independent, and then if you sell out, you become a loner. Mm, I can see that too. Oh damn it! No, I I I thought I had a good one for my my uh, for Leo. Love but... that. Let me. Um... Cool. Does that? How do you say Leo's last name? Zwidwicky. <laughs> but it. don't don't ever bother uh, <laughs> uh, pronouncing it. Call me Leo. <laughs> Call you Mr. Z. Mr. Z. Or I could just change it. You know, this this is it's not uh, you know set in stone. I, I don't think we do last names in our crew. Fuck now. Yeah, but the authority might, and I don't want to make uh, Aaron pull a tongue twister. Fuck the authority. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Screw him. He can struggle to pronounce that. That's what he gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so we still need one for a Leo, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of thinking that... Uh, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm still going to go with Afraid of the Dark, that my whole reason that I want to go to the surface is because I'm scared of the big, scary, dark gaze, but uh, um, nice. well, I'll just have to bring a flashlight, I guess. Okay, just a second here, telephone. Sure. Alright, so are we all set? I think so. What do we do now? Are we done? <laughs> we won. Yeah, that's the game. Hey! Um, good, good game. Yeah, guys. why don't we why don't we actually take a uh, quick break then? Because I wouldn't mind getting a drink. Um, I yeah. just want to make sure John knows what we're gonna do. But yeah, let's let's take just a Leave momentary a break. Leave a note for him in the chat. Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> well, since we just finished characters, do you mind taking a quick break, like a quick five okay. second break? Okay, sure. Why not? Only five seconds. Longer than five seconds. No. Uh, right. Five minutes. That's not even long enough for me to leave the room. Five seconds. God. Well, I think All a right. five-minute break then. That's fine. And then we can get there on to the final to perks, again. which would be uh, the authority figures and the friendships questions. So what? So what? Fifty after the hour. Yeah. Yeah. So well, five minutes. All right. I like that. Fifty after. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I I know the characterizations take longer than than it than usual. Like I, when I did it in the actual game convention, it didn't take that long. It only took like thirty minutes or something. But I guess it's yeah, slower it's online. A, it's a little easier when uh, when everybody can see, you know, everybody's looking at the book, and you can just uh, kind of interact more directly. Yeah, you can just do it more simultaneously. But uh, yeah.
for those of you still li for those of you still listening, we are about to play a game of misspent youth. I bleed edition apparently. And we've set the the scene as being in the diabolical underground city of I don't know. We don't actually have an uh, We just call it the underground. The underground. That's right. Yes. Where our little rebel group, the Spelunkers, is about mm -hmm. to make their move, making the world a better place. I'm so glad you're here to inform people of all that. Well, we are alive. Oh, yeah, well, yes, yeah, they can just skip to this part of the broadcast. They don't have to sit through all the wonky character creation, which I think is an excellent part of BT dubs, but some people don't uh, like, I like character the character creation. For uh, Misfit Youth, it's, uh, it's very involved. I, one of my friends like loves to listen to like podcasts and stuff, but he always skips the character creation, and I'm like, I don't understand. Yeah. Character creation is part of the fun of this game. Yeah. There's some sort of rule that the first 30% of any instructional video is 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 redundant, is doesn't actually instruct anything, so you can just skip it. And I guess that sort of here applies here as well. You can skip the first 30% because nothing has actually happened. You're just sort of saying, yeah, we are dot. We did stuff. Yeah. Or we haven't actually done anything yet. We we just exist. We. Uh, we, we created characters, but these characters aren't doing anything yet. Correct. All that will change soon enough. <laughs> Stay tuned. We think. But first, a word from our sponsors. Do you use toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> That's just it. That's the entire commercial. <laughs> oh, oh, good. good. <laughs> more of a poll, really. Yeah, really, more of a poll. <laughs> we interrupt this uh, advert with a quick weather service announcement. It's raining fire! Thank you for listening to this weather service announcement. <laughs> Again? Again. Again. Man, that they makes me so want to go outside. It happens yeah, every time you touch yourself. They've got to have, um, like, mutant sightings. Yeah, mutant sightings. Uh, and they're like the Bigfoot sightings where it's always out of focus and blurry. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Acidic rain. Uh, there could even be... Um, earthquakes. You know, uh, alerts of, like, oh, no, everybody, you know, everybody go home and lock your doors just in case the mutants break in. Yes, <laughs> yes. Earth earthquakes, I think, would be a little difficult since we would be able to feel the earthquakes happening as we sit underground. So it would be volcanic eruption or... Oh, yeah, but you know. you know what? None of us actually know what an earthquake really is. They could just, like, when one particular section gets out of control, they can just, like, totally demolish it and, yeah. like, cut them off from the rest of the, uh, like, underground... I'd say it was an earthquake. Yeah, an earthquake. yeah. this whole <laughs> yeah. section has been lost to an earthquake. They just yeah, set off some some explosive charges somewhere and oh earthquake. Yeah, how would we know? <laughs> um, actually, I, I I really like the idea of the, the weather service having like a they report like the estimates of how many years until the surface is habitable again. And yeah. It's always like oh it's it's a uh, it's down to two about million years. Approximately yeah. five hundred years. So it's like uh, be habitable. But it's always 500 years. It's been 500 years for the past 400 years. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. Every time it starts to get reasonable, there's like a massive setback, like a solar flare. And, yeah. You know, uh, meteorite. Zombie invasion. I think we're all back now, BT dubs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay, everyone's back, and everybody has their character sheets done, I guess. All right. So now we do friendship questions, I guess? Yes, the friendship questions. So let's so, go to that section there, the friendship questions. You, everybody has the, um, the Hangouts thing. Can, can you switch your name to your character name? Make it easier oh, yes. to track who's yeah. playing who. Yeah, I've already read myself the protectors or the authority <laughs> there. Nice. <laughs> so, yes.
Okay. So how does this work? Okay, the way a friendship question works is that you basically ask a question of your of a person next to you. Uh, since it's really hard to do in the chat when Seb will use it, we'll do it by the, the record sheet. So Aaron, you can ask ask a question to Damien. Damien's going to ask a question to Andrea. And Andrea's going to ask a question to Brendan. And Lucas is going to uh, Brendan's going to ask a question to Lucas. And uh, Lucas is going to ask a question to Aaron. Okay. And the question basically has to come up with... Uh, an authority figure, which I can actually use, which will show up in the session or could be involved. What do you mean? Let's see. I, I, I don't get it. I'm supposed to ask a friendship question where and how. Oh, here how we go. Samples. Yes. It should be yeah, there, actually. Creation. Okay, so how do we oh, work an authority figure into these? Oh, wait. So... So it's two separate things. So first, we should do authority oh. figures, and then we should oh. do the questions. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that, that was more than different than the one I did before. The one I did, basically, they're part of the same thing, but I guess they split them up in this version. Okay. So authority figures. Okay, There's so... Uh, each node each... comes up with an authority figure, and that will go on the authority sheet, because in the world of motifs, I guess, I'll put under that. So... Okay, so we, we give, we're giving the authority some ammunition here. We give yes. a right. character or force that is present in this episode uh, yeah. that we're going to see in this particular session yeah. uh, and controlled by the authority. So is it a crooked cop that walks the beat in your neighborhood, the fleet of robot animals that secretly monitor citizens' activities, a psychic virus that will turn people violently paranoid when it's released in the mind net? Uh... Uh, they might seem similar to systems of control, but systems of control are permanent features, and these authority figures are not necessarily going to stick around. Yeah, because okay. you, can't, you can't defeat authority figures. The system of control is going to be dealt with if you actually win the session. Okay. Yeah. So these are actually, like, the faces of the controls. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So right. then... So uh, there's we each come up with one. So I'll say uh, I want to see some of these angels. So I'll say there's a uh, a particular angel uh, angel detective. Let's see, I can come up with a name for him. Um, that is Gabriel. His job is, his job is actually tracking us down as the uh, the spelunkers. Yeah. So he's after. He's after uh, Tommy uh, uh, and the rest of us in particular. Gabriel, nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. Yeah, there you go. And what are these authorities like? I know that they're like. What are they? What are they supposed to be trying to do? Uh, these are authority figures that will show up in the session pretty much. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. They're just—they're uh, they're not necessarily related to us. They're just uh, people who will, yes. will see, you know. Yeah, show up the so he might be tracking this as well, or, or he might, might show up later. Like maybe he doesn't—he's tracking it now, but maybe he'll do something in the game, which actually have him show up. Okay, I got one. Yes. Um. So this is gonna be Jessica Jean, and she's a uh, reporter. Okay. She's a reporter for the Weather Channel. New, a new reporter, new recruit. Yeah, I, I was also thinking of having a, a name for the for the news anchor, but uh, I'm I'm sort of wondering should he be in the in the in the authority figure seat or should he just be in the world of motifs because he never actually does anything. He just reads out the weather. <laughs> yeah, the, he, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, so if he's actually like like that, I'd say that he he would authority authority figure is someone to actually show up in the game. If he's just okay, on the screen, so, yeah. for instance, it really doesn't uh, doesn't wouldn't count as a authority figure. Yeah, but we need a name for that anchor, so because he will definitely be showing up. Yeah, Ron Burgundy. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It's it's no. too obvious. It's too 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 too. That would be door. great. Though. He was really there. I haven't actually you seen that in the Ron Burgundy, so uh, I would have to rely entirely on your impressions of him. So no, let's let's not do that. Uh, um. But, well, it's basically that kind of guy, the sort of uh, smart prat type who uh, 
whose whose hair whose whose hair piece is more important to him than the actual content of the news? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we already got a new, uh, uh, a new report for the Weather Channel. We already got something like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe we should have someone which uh, is dealing with the distribution of the food supplies. Yeah. Um... I'm trying to think what you would uh, call that person. So, what if it's even just a delivery person? No, let's see. It could well, be, no, no, see, no. He needs to be uh, the quartermaster. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. quartermaster Dirk. Uh, quartermaster Dirk. Dirk. Dirk Diggler. Okay, quartermaster Dirk. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Come up with a last name if you want. Um, let's do like a. Dirk Burton. Yeah, Burton. Yes. U R T O N. Yeah. Okay. I'm, go- I'm going to do like a. Like a. So I don't know what line, line I'm typing on. Apparently, call him Seth Locke. Okay. And we don't know it, but he's like. The neighborhood spy. Okay, like, that sounds like, good. Oh, yes, you definitely yeah, have yeah, the he's, he's you can, yeah. Yes, yeah. you can definitely have like uh, authority figures who actually are basically people who have sold out to the man. So yeah, that is uh, definitely. But I like allowed. I like the idea of him being like around our age. Like he's just a kid we know and yes, he's a snitch, probably okay. to some degree trust. Yeah. 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 Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, one more. To pick. All right, so I want to make. Um, let me think of a good name for her. Um, Karen Seely, who's a protector of the future. Yeah. <laughs> so the protector. Protectors each have their own title, right? Because they're yeah. all they're all protectors. That means they're part of the council, and they each have their own title that indicates what they're a protector of. Yeah. Protector of the future means she's technically in charge of the children. She's technically in charge of kids Aww. and making sure kids are taken care of and educated, yes. which, of course, means she's actually in charge of making sure kids don't learn and are yeah, indoctrinated right. and uh, nice. yeah. taught the correct stuff. So she, like, has very much interest in us and our activities. Hmm. That's great. Whereas Gabriel is more specifically interested in what the results of our actions are. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and it's the type of thing where Gabriel might just be like, I need to track them down and throw them in the fucking jail. And Karen right. might be like, no, no, I'll let them think they're independent, but I'll monitor everything they do and just make sure they learn the right lessons. And then once Gary- once they cross the line, then I send in, uh, then I simply leak <laughs> something to Gabriel and he goes in charging. Right. And, That's uh, when I have the, the shit beat out of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's our five authority theaters who may or may not show up this session. Okay. So right. can we change? No. Can we possibly change the name of the quartermaster? Sure. To. Um, I had to pull up my thesaurus because I like this whole like theme where it's this is a good thing that you're getting this. We are giving this to you as a reward for your good behavior. Mm-hmm. Um. So what, what 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 were you thinking? Um, I think the closest... Oh, that's awful long. Um, I was thinking, like, a philanthropist or something along those lines. What, like, philanthropist? Nah, that's... No. Um, because philanthropists give out stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but out of their good nature. Uh, I would, I would say that the quartermaster is probably not big. Karen Seeley is probably one of the major protectors. I would say the quartermaster is he's basically just a functionary. Right, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. Is not not the name itself, but the title name, like like mm. the angel. Hmm. I don't know. We'll think about it. Oh, if I come yes, up with something, sir, I'll sir, let sir. you know. So so well, I mean, not... we could stick with this this protector of. Uh, yeah. uh, protector of theme, right. and that would mean the yeah. angels are, are are the common name for the protectors of the people. Mm. Yeah, 
and not not every um, protector is necessarily you know equal in power. Right. Well, yeah. quartermaster just sounds so militaristic. Yes. And I think that's, about, uh, not, yeah. that's something they're trying to avoid. Protector of supplies, mm. perhaps. My so, so official function would be uh, his official function name would be. Uh, it could be uh, the giver. The giver. The giver. Yes. Okay. The distributor. Uh, uh, the giver, I like, like better. Commutation, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The giver. Driver. Sorry, themes are really important, you guys. Yes, they are. No, I like that. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay, so we did that thing. So now, now we come up with uh, friendship. Now friendship questions. So I'll, I'll kick it off since I'm the. All right, so oh, friendship questions. There. Okay, you can put those in the world of motifs, I guess, because so, everybody should know what they are. Highlighted, explored, or explained. So I'll them. type that in. So this would be friendship questions. Uh, you take a moment to ask a question in the voice of that character. Okay. So you're um, asking a question in the voice of your character that elucidates something you want highlighted about that other character. Right, or about a relationship. Okay. And so we're going... Sorry. So, like, I would go to... Who am I next to? To Brendan. Brendan. You'll ask one to Brendan. Um, so I'll ask about... Hmm. We're going we in the order. Just put these down in the notes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is like that. All right. So you're. Uh, okay. You can put the. I guess you put your sheet notes. I guess that'd be fine. Well, oh, no, we could we could put it in the worlds of motifs, but really the answer what we need eventually are the answers, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we can put them in the yes, notes. Think, yes. Uh, your the question or the answer should uh, elaborate on the authority figure. At least I oh, think it, it is. Um, oh, okay. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so because no, no. the samples on. Okay, I guess they changed that yeah. as well. That's that's just older edition. They had that. Yeah. The we have authority figures now. We need to focus on each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they yeah, they split that up. They they used to have friendship and authority. So the same. In the old edition, so. Yep. Okay. so there are examples on 19, I guess, if you need some ideas. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> it's it's just interesting that your that Ethan is 17, so he's uh, kind of on the older side. Of the group. In fact, he's the oldest in the, in our little group here. That's why uh, I think I know so much. Yet you're still optimistic. Uh, it's true. <laughs> And naive, so. Well, I'm very sheltered. Um, um, so what? Uh, I don't know. I'm... It's interesting to me, but I can't think of a question. Uh, we can. We can. Uh... We'll get the samples. Uh... Well, it says it does not necessarily have to be about friendship. So if you specifically want to ask, what has kept you so naive, or something like oh, yeah. that? If, if yeah. there's a major plot hole, who, that, who has kept now... you so naive? <laughs> well, well it doesn't say, have to be um, somebody. What, how, how, do be something. I, how does uh, how do I uh, Tommy? Uh, it would be in your voice, right? Uh, how do, yeah. How do I protect you from uh, from the worst? Uh, well, this should be process. about history, right? They should uh, be sort of something. Developing that's... our characters. Yeah. yeah. You could you could just say how did I protect you, but yeah, yeah. Oh sure. How have how I protected protect you? you? From what? From from the atrocities of the authority. Like, how do I? Uh, how did I keep you sheltered? So that you didn't why, lose why? your home. Okay. So you were um so since you're kind of like uh one of the cool guys, you um you you saw something in me, but I mean I, I suppose you saw something in me and you, you kinda well I don't I don't know how you felt about it, but you, you just kinda pulled me into your group. Like you mm -hmm. uh put me under your wing, so to speak. Like um 
Um, I don't know why, but you, you basically just kind of put me under your wing so I don't get into trouble, maybe. Nice. Okay, cool. So do I ask a question of Andrea? Yeah. Let me see just an example here real quick. Um... So I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking like. Wait, hang on. Uh, yeah, we should put these answers also in the in the uh, friendship block on the authority sheet, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So okay. So why haven't you told the rest of the, or why do you um why do you give me more rations than the rest of the group? Um, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I'm thinking of the right character here. Okay, yes, I am. <clears throat> well, look at you. You're so little. You could use some more meat on your bones. I'm afraid you're going to fall and snap in half. Nice. Um, so you, so so wait so let me just I just want to highlight the wonder <laughs> of the fourteen year old caregiver feels the need to take care of more than anybody else the seventeen year old <laughs> book nerd I love it yep so I'm still like the I still have like the baby face I'm the youngest look I love it yes it's great by like three years <laughs> that's great <laughs> so whose notes does that go in um Is that my question my notes. Yeah, you can well, well so. we, we, we need to put them in our notes, and we put them in the friendship questions on the authority sheet as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, I figured the authority can take care of that. Yeah. Yeah, authority. Sorry. We'll do okay. something. All right, sure, I will. <laughs> so the um, Okay. Let's see here. Um. So. Bex, given your independent streak, what did I do to earn your trust? Let's see. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, of something that would be that would make sense, but I guess I guess this works. I guess this makes sense. So uh, I'm thinking that like what happened for me, my sister eventually she was like, fuck all this and I'm going to the surface and she like just left to, to be like, I'll come back for you and she left and I've never seen her since. So that's part of why I'm Aww. fucking angry. But after that happened, my parents are dead, so that's that's why I became an orphan. And at that point, um, I really was not sure of what to do or how to live for myself and like I was starting to starve a little bit because I didn't want to go into whatever protective custody they have. Um, I didn't want anybody to take care of me from the official authority because I hated them. I blamed them for what whatever must have happened to my sister. Um, so you, since you were an orphan already, you helped me to find a place to actually find food. Again, this, this thing of like you actually helped me get a place of my own somehow, some cave, and like get food, and you help make sure I actually don't starve. So Aww. the fact you that you, for him. yeah, the the fact that you knew, yeah, her, actually. I'm actually her, yes, <laughs> the fact that you knew like how to take care of that kind of stuff, and you made sure in this incredibly trying time that I didn't starve to death. I'm like, all right, you're okay. You're you welcome. Get you get a pass. <laughs> All right. Oh. So, Leo. <laughs> I love some of these questions. They're wonderful. Um, <laughs> True. Uh, 
I, I, I very much dislike anyone that has the word me in it because you're effect effectively just asking questions about yourself to another person. Of course, character. which is the point I don't like that. Supposed to. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it's... what they're supposed to do. No, but there we, there you, I, I, I like to think that these are questions you ask about other people's characters so you can mess up their character creation and not just some some back alleyed way to support your own character creation. Well, right? they're they're about creating relationships and they're about yeah. creating, and so that requires right. the commentary, which is why I think I'm going to pick for you. What's the most terrible thing you've done, and why did you confess it to me? Um. But that gives you the agency to to pick that question and to make it that way. Yeah. Yep. Um. The question is, what did I do, and what? What is the most terrible did... thing you've done, and why did you confess it to me? Mm -hmm. um, crap. I want to say I orphaned somebody, but that might be pushing it a little. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that works. I orphaned Beck and I and Vic. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. And I told you because. Um, Wow. Yeah, I caused an. I caused an. Uh, I went psycho and I cut their throats for no reason. No. Um, yeah, welcome to the group. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the group. Go shock, team. Shock. <laughs> yes, uh, let's just go with that. <laughs> I think it was an accident, like uh, in an avalanche or like a. a yeah, yeah, like a yeah. Accident. Tunnel. Yeah, mm -hmm. they accidentally stabbed themselves twenty-seven times. <laughs> Wait, yeah, so did you but, actually yeah. murder them? Or did you just cause an accident? Uh, I'm I'm very tempted to take a humorous stake on this whole thing, um, but I, I'm not sure. I uh, I don't really well, think. Yeah, again, this this game is uh, sort of about being kids. It has some uh, like killing people is really not an easy thing to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah so. Um. All right, so so I caused the accident that killed all their parents. Yeah. Okay. So, and why did you tell me? <laughs> That's a really good I... question. <laughs> Guilt. Um, I, uh, you, did. you know, I, I, I found you in your leopard state before Bex helped you, and I, 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 no, no, wait, it's better the other way around. If uh, you, you were, you, you were frustrated with the loss of your parents, and uh, I felt sorry for you. No, that's, that just that's doesn't work at all. It's, um, I, I felt responsible for your, for your, uh, for your, for your descent into, into, uh, neglect. Hmm. Yeah. So you came clean to me. Yes. Okay. All right. So now I need to uh, ask a question of Aaron. Um, why don't you just leave? I mean, you've got all this expert climbing skill. Uh, you you could just leave the city and 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 be gone. Why do you keep coming back to this 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 the underground city? Um. Well, uh, first of all, there's there's uh you know locked doors and airlocks and stuff keeping me, but the that's just an excuse. The real reason is uh, without without you guys, without my group, uh, I'm not useful, right? To you guys, I'm I'm very useful and I'm cool, and you guys, you know, look up to my skills and, and stuff like that. So if I leave, so it's a need for a social clique. That's yeah, good. exactly. I I yeah. Uh, that's a good excuse. I need a clique. Sure. You need us. <laughs> Who are you going to look cool in front of if you're uh, all by yourself? <laughs> yeah. The rocks don't appreciate you like we do. 
Tommy, your hair is so cool today, man. <laughs> How'd you do that? How'd you part it like that? Okay, uh, looks like we've got uh, <laughs> some questions here. So I think we can get on to the next part, which will be the actual game. <laughs> Hooray! Longer than expected, but oh well. That's fine. It, took, it didn't take long when I actually did it, but oh well. So, let's see. That's probably the best part of it. I like the character, the character creation. Okay, so first of all, this is C1. What's up? So, uh, What's up? Yes. So, so let's to, see. To, um, for a quick overview, though, there's going to be seven scenes total? Yes, there is. Seven, seven acts? Seven scenes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they each have a specific purpose in the the story structure, right? Yes, they do. So scene okay. one is what stop. It's basically the instigator, like what uh, what starts the story. What does the story be doing, which is fucking up your life, and uh, what are you gonna do about it? Basically, it's the instigates the. So, uh, let's see. The way this works is uh, basically one yo gets to frame the scene. So basically you get to choose the authority figure who's going to show up in the scene and uh, the first five seconds of what's actually happening. And then from there you uh, do free role play as well as I be the GM and, and also you know do NBCs and such. So what I was thinking was um, the he suggests no, but that's just uh, but stuff that you kind of decide is that the first scene is actually um, the authority, the protectors are basically given uh, a special uh, distribution of new f food supplies to the uh, to the kids of the uh, underground. Basically, uh, there's basically a new like uh, initiative passed to feed the children. And uh, they're basically giving out additional food, uh, additional rations to the the kids of the uh, underground. And basically, there's uh, the giver Dirk Burton is there in order to uh, facilitate the distribution of the make sure that the the new uh, rations are distributed to the people of the proper age. Nice. Yes. So does that actually sound like a good starting point? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Oh. Where is this? Is this like near the top of the? Uh, of no, the I'd say thing? it's kind of in kind of like a common area, kind of like um, like a large, you know, the market area of the uh, mm -hmm. of the underground. Wouldn't it more likely be at his place, so that? Uh, that he's at the uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we'd be actually be at a distribution point, pretty much. There's basically a distribution yeah. center. Yeah. And yes, they sit out there, and uh, you know, like they're a lot of times like uh, you know, better health for the for the children and all that. Okay. And uh, so we, so all the they've told uh, all the kids to come, or is it? Yes, yeah, so basically, uh, all the all the, our, the people under eighteen are years of age are basically going to get an additional rations uh, this uh, this distribution period, or to improve the local health of the youth. Okay. Come get your no cherry cola for bars today. Yes, sort of like that. So, uh, yes, you of course show up because you actually have the rights to actually get these these new rations, uh, which are being distributed. And yeah, uh, Dirk is there, and he's dressed in his uh, his uniform. And uh, there's other people like giving out, uh, being very friendly and, and nice, and giving out uh, these rations to uh, to uh, very needful children. And, okay. uh, and which um, oh, so it's the the giver guys are authority figures. Yes, yes, cool. they, yes. And okay, what friendship question are, is also be distributing thing? I think uh, the best one would be why does Vic give me more rations? I'm sorry, what's going on? I got distracted. <laughs> okay, uh, basically what is going on is that uh, all of you are at the distribution center. Uh, but what, what was with the friendship question? That was the part okay, I mean. yeah, because one of the, the other things which has to do is that one of the friendship questions will be. Uh, um, put into here. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess. So I think that's what it says here. Well, it says, actually, you just do one or the other. So if we have an authority figure, then we... we okay, one or the other. Okay, so yeah, so it's going to... The authority figure is uh, is Dirk Burton. The, uh, yes. 
so yes, they are giving out um, these uh, these ration uh, ration packs to the various uh, children. Basically, they check your ID to make sure that you're under 18. If you are, you're given uh, uh, you know, um, a ration pack uh, with some uh, you know some nice little candies in it. They're actually well, you know. Can you, these? you know, these are, these uh, these candies are typically diagnostic. Typically, uh, most people just get the regular rations, which are you know like like mushroom ration and all that. But these appear to be like rations which are you know sweetened in some way by some Cheery. industrial process. Yes, brightly colored. They yes, look like they are. They're brightly colored, colored and all that. Tastes like Fisher Price yes. toys. But that's yes. it's all we have. So we enjoy our little brightly colored. Yes. Food so yes. So what are so all of you of course so, showed up to actually get? I, to get I, have, I have a question. Okay. So do the orphans have ID badges? Because we're orphans. We're not recognized as people. Yeah, I was gonna say. To yes, even yes, even yes, uh, even if you don't have ID badges, they will give you the ration back because if it, as long as you uh, you are uh, appear to be a, a child. Oh, okay. They so only check ID on people. Here. Maybe they have their own system, like they have like a sub citizenship. Yes. But they're they're well, locked, but not. Well, ideally, they just check your ID if if you look uh, look too adult to get these yes. ration packs. Yes. Your, if you look too adult, I'll check your ID. ID. Otherwise, they'll just give it to you. All right, I've got I've got a I've got a plan here. I've got a, a way to uh, to take advantage of the situation. Okay. So, uh, I'm actually going to talk it over with uh, with the brain over here, uh, Ethan. Tommy pulls pulls Ethan. To, you know, we get our rations, and Tommy pulls Ethan over and says, "Wait a minute. These guys, they, uh, you know, what about all the little kids who can't who can't come up here themselves? You know, are they gonna ask the parents to come? Maybe we could step in and say, look, we'll uh, we'll work with you. We'll do you a favor. We'll take the extra rations and uh, and deliver it to all the little kids. You know, you don't want those little, you know, four and five year olds to to go without their rations, right?" What do you think, man? Do you think they'll uh, we can get away with that? I I don't know, Tommy. That's uh, you know, you might get in trouble trying to get those extra rations. No, okay. it's fine. and yeah, currently, right now, they they basically have very nicely dressed you know people get distributed, and they're very they're being very friendly to the uh, to the children. You know, like you know, asking their names. You know, uh, patting them on the head. You know, they'll hear some you know some sweet you know raspberry flavored. Uh, you know, ration for you there. You know, you eat and be healthy there, little kid. You know. Wait, so you no, need look. to help just pass them out to the smaller kids? Yeah, we're gonna, you know, all the kids who can't show up themselves, we're gonna, we're gonna take it to them, right? Don't worry about me. I'm not gonna get in trouble. No way, man. But okay. do you, how, how can I, how can I get them to, uh, to give me the rations, though? Okay, so here's here's what's going to happen here. As you're discussing this, you notice that a few of the kids, you know, who are pretty hungry right now, so they they told you just rip under and start eating things. But when they eat the ration pack, they seem to be kind of mellow than usual. They seem, mm -hmm. you know, they seem to it's, after they eat it, they just, just seem to like very calm and you know very composed. And they they, they just you know and they just wander off with kind of a you know like yeah, they have a dazed yeah, look to them. Run. Cool, yay, yeah. awesome. Yes, yes, and, you know, they said, all right, just go on at home there, kids, and he said, yes, we will I go have home. the most awesome today, the idea for today. Why don't we all go back to our rooms, crawl into bed, and just sleep, man? That's just <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Have a nap. Um, so, yes, you, you definitely notice that the people who have eaten these ration no, packs not a nap. are, we just are, are, being, are, are not being, are being very, you know, Mellow and you know, calm, and uh, they act strangely. They have a glossy stare in their eyes. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go up and uh, talk to the giver directly. Oh yes, like, greetings, citizen. How can I help you today? You hey, wish uh, to have one of these fine ration packs. What flavors do you want? Great cherry. I, I join uh, I join uh, Tommy out in the in talking to these guys because they like me. They 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 wanna they yeah. they, they know that I'm the uh, that if anybody is going to do this right, that's me. I'm standing behind the two of them, just like really nervous, looking like. Oh yeah. man, <laughs> this ain't never gonna work, man. All right, so yeah, in fact, you know, we'll we'll take uh, we we've got you know we'll we'll look out for the little kids who can't come get their own. Uh, 
why don't you just give us, you know, uh, a few extra packs of rations, and uh, we'll go distribute it for you. You don't want to go down. Like, down like to the delivery down. boys. Um, you know, do our yeah. bit for the round shit. Mm, well, don't worry about that. We already have uh, enough personnel to go down and deliver them personally to, to those people who can't make it there themselves. I do appreciate uh, that you're willing to I'll volunteer for uh, various duties there, citizen. Well, you wouldn't want to be late. I mean, you, you guys are on a pretty strict schedule. I wouldn't want you to get you guys in trouble to, when you guys are going down and deliver it to everybody else. I mean, let us help you. Uh, I'm afraid uh, only uh, authorized personnel of the of the givers are allowed to uh, distribute these goods. What if one of you... So we can, can we get our ration packs already? Ah, yes, of course. Uh, so he looks at you and uh, all of you seem at the right age. Is it all right? Uh, so you start each of giving a ration pack. There you go, and be happy, citizens. Thank you. So, um, hey, these ration packs taste pretty good. What's in them exactly? Okay. <laughs> yes, you, 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 you start eating them, and some, you just feel very No, I don't calm. stop eating like, them. I first ask the question, and then I decide whether or not I want to eat them. I make it appear as if I'm eating them, but I'm not actually eating them. I'm not I eating them. Oh, yes. Uh, so it says Things. We have a new uh, you know, um, creation process to make these uh, these rations uh, extra tasty for uh, the children. After all, the uh, let's see, it was that person of names here. It was uh, the protector of the future wishes that uh, the children to be to be healthy and happy for the future. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yes. Ethan, uh, what's what's your take on all of this? Um, since when does food simply fall from the sky, or as it were to be, the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, though. They, they don't want to... Uh, they don't want to just give it to anybody. It's very, very targeted. They yeah. wanted to make sure uh, only the people they want are, are getting it. Specifically, um, the younger people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they've never, you know, as the uh, the uh, sort of the person who remembers the the history and like knows how how stuff works down here. Yes. Uh, yes. Never, this is kind of, this is this is definitely a new initiative. They have not yeah, done completely. Done before. They've never given a shit about the children before. Uh, so. What's changed? Why are we so important now? Or more importantly, what's so important that we don't do that we're now being given these, uh, well, let's, let's not mean words, drugs. We are being stoned off our asses with a few candy bars. That, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that doesn't sound like they're particularly interested in, 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 us, uh, in, in us having healthy exercise every day, you know? I mean, are you saying this to, to the... Yeah, I'm saying this to you specifically, because you're the smart one. You're supposed to figure out what so... Why, why, okay, why... Okay, so I've actually, uh, actually seen this loudly uh, in earshot of the givers. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we've taken our ration packs and we're, we're, we're forming our little clique outside, the, outside of the, uh, the, the... On our way home. Well, I, I say, well, I mean, he's got the rations right there on the counter. Why don't we just, why doesn't someone just try to, you know, distract him while someone else takes more? Did we want more well, rations? Is that what the what the deal was, Tony? But if they're not good. Well, now, now I want them even more so they don't get distributed to people. Yeah. Yeah. So let's fuck them up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay, so it looks like you have a plan. So this is a this is under the conflict phase. Oh, no. Yes, right. the conflict is that you, yes, your goal is to basically uh, so do you want like steal the the rations or try and mess them up so that it can't just be distributed. Now we're gonna, we're, gonna steal. we're trying to prevent them from being consumed and turning everybody into zombies. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, some, somebody's gonna distract them and then we're gonna steal a bunch of them and run away. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. so, sure. Okay, that's uh, right. that's your stakes so, that you basically manage to steal the rations and get away. Uh, my stakes well, are that you get caught and. Uh, they, they they take all your rations away and uh, then they uh, 
you're and then and, you, and, you, fa- anyway. and you fail at your at your mission. Pretty much, you don't yeah. get. Uh, sure. much, they just they, they distribute all the uh, ration packs without any more destruction yeah. from you. Even worse, they don't take our rations away. They make us eat these rations. Oh yes, that yeah. too. Yes, they do. Yes, yeah, they do make you eat. They make you eat the rations as well. The drugs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. So who's gonna stand up to the man? Um, well, how, how are we? How are we distracting them? I'm gonna yeah, run up with a fucking wrench and beat some people in the fucking face. Well, well, that's that's <laughs> tactical about this. Um, we need them. Nice we tactics. Need... <laughs> that, no, that that's very violent. That's Beck's tactics. <laughs> okay, so yeah, but you, you basically you have to basically I gotta say who's gonna stand up. So who's gonna do the first action here? So I'm gonna distract. So, okay. Okay. Well, so gonna, use like, a no, 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 no. I've uh, right. If we set a fire somewhere, then uh, so then if we set a fire inside a storage building, then they will at least have to leave. Uh, evacuate part of the building just to fight fire, or at least it will attract their attention because you know fire shiny bright uh, okay. stuff like that. So we're going to use dice um, stream, man. So like the way it works is that um, one thing about this game is that you roll first, then you describe what you're doing, or okay. as it says in the book, shut up and roll the fucking dice. Okay. So, quick, quick question though: Is this dice roll resolving just like one part of action, or is it resolving? Oh, first, roll, first of all, yes. First, of all, we have to roll the dice. Uh, someone has to roll the dice. Okay. Yes. So, is, basically, the person the standing up is going to roll the dice. This is for the whole stakes, right? Like, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Basically, so, yeah. We've already decided the stakes. Now we've got to do the action. So, first, the person who stands up is going to roll the dice and then decide on a trait they're using to actually fight against the man. So, who's making uh, the call? So, so I, I would say whoever's setting the fire because you're also damaging authority property. Okay. Cool. Would be the one uh, roll. Okay, so um, roll two uh two d six. Hang on, shouldn't we pre-plan the rest of the pre-plan the rest of this this this? Yeah, so you can make you can make you can do it in situ and say your make your plans and then do then decide what to do. Okay, so we set a fire and mm-hmm. then while everybody is distracted. Um, Will will just swipe the rations. Is that who's, uh, who's clever so, so or enough? Okay, well that's that's your plan, yeah. but it may not work as possible because what right. happens is that you roll the dice and then you, then you use what trait you're using and describe what you're doing, and then the authority gets to counteract you. Okay. Cool. Yes. So it seems like it seems like Bex is gonna kick it off with the the fire. Okay. Sure. So you, like, roll two d six for sure. your dice. That's a five. A five. So what happens there is that I go to the authority, to the struggle tracker, and put a five for the red. Mm-hmm. Which will be the, uh, and you should have three and eleven already, right? Uh, no, I don't pick those till after you roll the dice. Because you might roll three. And basically mm-hmm. I get, um, yes, and what I do is that once you roll the dice, I get eleven because I get on the opposite side of the board. But also, because you didn't roll a 7, I also get 7. Got it. Yes. Because the authority, uh, the house always wins, as they say. The authority always gets 7 and another number, unless you roll 7 off the bat. So, how are you, what trait are you using to actually do this? Grease Monkey, I'm starting up a fire, right? So I just, I, I go into a nearby building, find some piece of machinery, and break it. <laughs> Okay, you you, you the set the, some machine and 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 break it, and then um, well you do that, and uh, the fire starts, but then then the fire alarm goes off, and uh, a good alarm. Then uh, what happens is that the um, that the fire suppression drones start coming out to um, to basically try and spray down the uh, the fire or put it out. <laughs> So that's uh, my counteraction. So who's going to stand up next? Who's swiping? Um, I'm on swipe patrol, I think, because I am yes. fast. Okay. So I also roll 2d6? Yes, you roll 2d6 because, uh, yeah, you roll, roll and then you describe how you're using your fast trait in order to... Uh, what is, why does it matter what you choose? Because uh, when you actually win, you have to deci- describe... How you have to use that trait to succeed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I rolled an eight. All right, an eight. Let's 
So And I am uh, so fast, I am just like lightning. As soon as they turn their backs on the food, it is gone. Alright. So let's see. You get an eight. And I get a three. Because you haven't claimed three yet. So yes. So uh, yes, uh, I can't. So yes, uh, they d uh, definitely are paying attention to like the fire. Uh, Turner looked at the fire, but see that the drone, that the fire suppression drones are actually um, going out there to actually put out the fire. So they're not too concerned with it, and more concerned with their 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 doing their job. But they look back. It looks back. Uh, they see that uh, some of the uh, whole handful of rations are missing, and you're running off. And say, hey, stop her! Her and. Uh, Basically, one of the surveillance drones kind of turns a look to you and then starts chasing after you. So, oh, yeah. snap. Yeah. So, yep. So, now who's going to stand up? Remember, you can stand up more than once if you want, if you want to keep right. standing up. Well, I'll, I'll stand up as well. Okay. I'm going to... Uh... So, first, roll the dice. Also five. Okay, you actually win then. Oh yes. Nice. Yes, and five. I believe the trait first trait was used was uh, grease monkey. So, uh, how is by using his grease monkey uh, does do you do you succeed at defeating the authority and getting away with the rations? Because um, basically, uh, uh, if you land on his, on his trait, you basically are going to work inside with him in order to actually succeed. What if if the uh, the the fire suppression system is also causing certain uh, emergency airlocks to open, which yeah. now allows access to the cavern system in which uh, uh, Tommy is is uh, awaiting uh, some sort of handover? Okay, okay, that sounds good. Yes, good. Managed, yes. So you managed to grab the rations and run off with them, and the authority uh, does not get to you in time, and the airlock closes behind you after the fire goes out. So yes, so they have to you know reprogram the door to open, but by then you've got away with the uh, the ration packs. Sweet. Yes. So yes, you have won the the first. Hooray! Yes. So now what you can do is what is called a interstitial scene, basically describe you know what you're, what you're going to do afterwards, uh, like what you do afterwards, uh, like, uh, you describe among yourselves. Uh, you know, we'll celebrate a bit, and then you're gonna. Get to the next. We're gonna to go to the next scene here. So maybe we do something with the rations to, uh, like, uh, pay back. Like, okay. Maybe, so the next scene too is called fighting back. <laughs> so okay. So basically, we gotta choose a friendship question or authority figure. This scene is gonna figure uh, feature. Right. And it should be so. So John picked last time, but it's actually it it uh, rotates around, right? Mm. Yeah. So. Pick some, I guess I could go for the next yeah. one if you yeah. want. So do you want to have a authority figure show up, or uh, do you want to have uh, a friendship cushion feature so, in the scene? Yeah, I get one of those, and then I get to... Oh, yeah. The By the way, i got to clear the authority sheet, because the struggle, because we've done that. Um... This is fighting back. So sorry. What's the what's the scene supposed to be about? All right. So I'll explain what the fighting back scene is here. Yeah. Okay. The, the story is the clerk takes the problem. The first beat is introduced. The first beat is introduced, and you come up with a question. So. And then. Okay. So basically, uh, you you've now know that the that they're basically distributing these rations to actually. Uh, you know, drug the, the kids. How are we going to fight back against that? How are you going to stop them? Because you, you've you just you've slowed them down right now by taking like a good deal of their rations, but that's still not going to totally end their plans to totally drug all the kids in the uh, in the underground. Okay. Um, yes. And so the so, beat apparently is a twist or turn in the story, where something new comes into the narrative, or where it's changed pretty significantly. Yeah. Uh, so I want the to work in the question. Um, why does Vic give more rations to Ethan? Okay. Uh, yeah, since we're dealing with the rations, and I think in the first well, five seconds, we're uh, 
we... These are not good rations. These are not the sort of stuff that you give to other people. So in the, in the first five seconds, uh, we head back to one of, the, one of our caches uh, of you know, our, our hidden um, supplies of rations our that we stockpiled. Yes, because you have the, uh, the exploit, so you definitely have that. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and so, and, and, uh, so I think Vic and, you know, Vic uh, is, uh, in the first five seconds, Vic is there, um, uh, you know, looking at these, these poisoned rations and, uh, and then, uh, everybody else kind of, you know, walks in and and, uh, and immediately starts munching. You know, it's like it's lunchtime, so we we immediately start munching on the uh, the, the non-content content rations. Right? Thinking about it, yeah, uh, about what to do. Cool. Definitely. Wait, huh? So, so we're now lunching on our on our on our personal rations, and and we leave these yeah. these drug rations in the corner. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, Vic, okay. Vic then, is is looking over the poisoned rations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then Aaron asks if uh, uh, Tommy asked the question, why is uh, why is is uh, Vic giving Vex uh, extra uh, food because apparently yeah. she brought a little extra for just for him. Yeah. Well, and I the way I'm picturing Vic, Vic is she's scrawny as hell. Um, yeah. Very very tiny girl. Um, she probably has her hair cropped like at first glance um, because she hasn't developed yet. She probably looks like a guy to most people, but you guys all know she's a girl. Um, so she's just this scrawny thing. And she probably only eats half the rations she actually gets and probably gives the rest away, probably very often oh, very to well. Ethan. All right, so, so Tommy, you know, he, he you know, uh, unwraps one, chomps it down, and, uh, and then, you know, goes over and with his, his charming uh, demeanor, it's like, hey, Vic, are you going to eat the rest of that? Can I have it? No, you can't have it. That's... Ethan's. Oh come on! I'm the one who did all the work around here. What did What did he do? He just sits around and reads his books. You don't get it, Tommy. Andrea is sweet on Vex. Andrea and Vicky and Vex sitting in a tree. I don't know what a tree is, but I'm sure they're making out in it. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. Uh, shut up, Leo. A little bit red. <clears throat> you know, I always give my um, my canned potatoes, <laughs> my creepy, gross fungus potatoes, um, mm. to Ethan. Those are my favorite too. Yeah. See. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm if, so hungry. Maybe I'll just uh, I'll just eat these. Nasty raspberry rations, then. Sure, if you want to be a fucking dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said um, you said that the ration packs look normal, except they have these additional little candies in them, right? Yes, they do. So basically, flavor of crystals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Vic says. Um, if you're so hungry, why don't you try eating everything but that raspberry flavor crystals? That sounds like wishful thinking to me. All we right. can't fucking well, trust you know any food they give us now. That is true. It's not like they are suddenly... Uh, if, if, if they can disseminate this, these, this stuff into, into, into their normal rations, into the normal food, then... You know, then eventually they're just gonna put it into everything they give us. Exactly. Uh, so, if if it's not the flavor crystals, we we might already have lost this battle. Yeah, man. This war against All right. the. I'm not gonna. I'm man, not gonna stand man. for this. I'm not gonna stand for this. I deserve more rations. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. So, 
I just uh, <laughs> God damn it, Tommy! <laughs> kind of try to eat around it more or less, and uh, it's actually you know. Mm. Okay, so you gotta try and eat around the flavor crystals. Pretty good, pretty good. Hey, look. Maybe we could, uh, you know, if we just uh, open them up and you know dig it out well, with a knife or whatever, the, take out the crystals. They're pretty big. They're pretty mixed in. They're not like like big crystals or like little crystals. They're like mm. like. What 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 are they inside of? I, I, well, hang on. We can go through a little chemistry lesson here and try and figure out how to how to disseminate a crystal of unknown structure and property from the rest of the whole meal. Okay, uh, well, that's, that's obvious. It looks like that you probably have to try and find a, a science lab of some kind in order to uh, do a chemistry uh, right. check on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, because you, uh, you, because you, you're you an authority where such science is totally controlled, you have to break, break into one of the, uh, the laboratories. Guys, this is basic chemistry. You just need some of that uh, some of that soda they give us. Have you ever not seen people uh, dissolve those crystals in the soda? You don't remember the reaction that happens. Everybody loves it. Makes like a volcano. <laughs> That's why he gets the extra potatoes. All right. <laughs> All you do is nice the soda and they're nice good. Okay, so that that All sounds right. like a struggle, right? Like we're gonna. So our hope is to, uh, you know remove the crystals and, and basically get a bunch of extra food for, for everybody. Uh, when they when they give us this poison stuff, we'll... Okay, we'll, so you want to find a way to uh, disseminate the crystals from the rations. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, okay. so our, our, our hope is... Uh, well, you know how, we just need to get that soda. The, uh... All the, you know... All the rations are, are good to eat from, uh, yeah. from now on. Yeah. Well, so at we least the ones, you, the ones you actually uh, can actually uh, use uh, disseminate the crystals from. Yeah. Yeah. But, yes. but then we have a way to do it for, for everything, right? Yes, uh, except that uh, how are you going to get the actual chemical in order to do so? The soda. Yes. All right. Well, our hope That's is the to, part we to, need the science lab for, I think. Right. Our hope well, is we to, don't really need the science supply. lab. I mean, um, we we need to sign supplies, and um, you know, if we, we perhaps we could uh, wing it and say that uh, we're we're trying to uh, uh, brush uh, brush up on our chemistry a little bit, and uh, well, uh, you know, learn learn some more about chemistry, and for that we want to do some some yeah. homebrew experiments. Maybe they'll just so, give us this soda, or we could just break the fuck in. That, but, that's an option too. <laughs> So okay, quick, so you, uh, you do you uh, very uh, awesome. You can try and you know, go to it during the uh, during the red shift hours, maybe try and sneak in, try and pretend yeah. to be an employee, but, uh, or, well, we could, or we could wait till it's shut down. Before, and, uh, before we decide try on that, break though, in at night. <laughs> just well, on, there's no the night or day because we're underground, but well, there is no like times where it, that, it, the labs are shut down while so, the, the so employees a, are away. On a procedure note, though, the, yes. it, it actually says you know for the struggle, we don't we don't say how we're going to do it yeah. first. Wow. First, we say. This is what we, you know, we're hoping that this is the outcome, right? Okay. And then we okay. figure out, then we, you know, by rolling the stuff, we figure out, okay, this is how, how we do it, and this is how it works or how it doesn't work, right? Okay. Sure. Okay. So, so All right. I'm saying, so I'm saying here's remote, what's going to happen if you fail. Get, you know, we get the supplies to, to purify all the rations. Okay. okay. That's yours. Yeah. Okay, yeah. my thing is that you fail in that, and you get you get uh, also uh, exposed uh, in trying to do this, and you now it will have a warrant for your rest out. The kids, man. My what were the worst about? Uh, basically, if you fail, if you you fail to actually get what you need to get rid of the crystals, and also you're caught, uh, you're basically uh, you know surveyed in the process, and you'll have the authorities after okay. you. Yes, yeah. so basically the uh, the angels will be after you because you'll be in for guilty of breaking and entering into a secure laboratory. Well, if, that's if we go the breaking and entering route. Or, but, or uh, for whatever for whatever reason. Trespassing as well, or like, uh, you know, being uh, in a area you're not supposed to be and all that. Uh, either way, you're going to be one of fugitives if you... Uh, yeah, if you, depending yeah, on how okay. it goes. Sure. Yes. want us for one reason or another. All right, cool. So then we do. Then we start okay. rolling dice. Right? Okay. So yes. Well, first, uh, who's gonna stand up first? Um. Oh right, that's right. Um. 
I'm gonna think I'm gonna stand up and uh, uh, okay. just ask. Okay, now for, uh, then just roll the dice. Yeah. It's and just two d six, right? Yep. Two d six. I rolled an eight. Nice. Okay, that's an eight. So I get seven and uh, another number, which would be for that is this one. I get, uh, let's see, it's three or eleven actually. Yeah, I get three or eleven. It says okay. So, did you did you mean to cover seven with a red die or a red chip? Oh, sorry, no, I didn't mean. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, black chip. So seven, and uh, I have to take three because it's the offset the board. Okay, so that. So okay. how you? So what trait are you using? What are you actually doing? Is your first action? Uh, I am using my uh, uh, my opportunity trusted. Uh, okay. And uh, and tell them uh, I ask our, our our chemistry teachers, hey, uh, where do you keep all this this uh, this these these chemical supplies, especially this soda stuff? I mean, it seems really cool. Uh, I, I'd like to do some uh, some 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 homework with this stuff. Okay, I he says, oh, I see your your most interest in the chemistry supplies. Well, uh, I suppose I could uh, allow you to. Uh, to see some of the chemical property of this, but you'll have to be under constant surveillance. This is a very uh, dangerous chemical, and uh, we cannot allow uh, you people of such low clearance in order to do this, to use this uh, without being uh, surveyed. Says the teacher. So that's my counteraction. That basically, yes, you're going to be definitely watched and surveyed while you try and use this stuff. So it'd be hard to actually pull off the action unless you can figure out some way to convince them. So that's who's who's gonna stand up next. Um thinking it should be somebody sciencey. Yeah, that's who actually what knows what they're doing. Well well actually we don't need the science just yet. What we need right now is I mean what with the science uh yeah, we need somebody sciencey to help identify the proper ingredients. That's well, that would be a good one. give you that, right? I mean, we're what? The teacher would do going to give you the stuff, right? Yeah, he was going. He, basically, he was going to give you the stuff, but you're going to be surveyed. Uh, basically, be under surveillance of when you of, and he's uh, of when it's being used. So basically, all right. I'll, I'll yes. uh, yeah. Oh, because I got it. It's restricted chemical. <laughs> Four. So. so I okay. So if we uh, get some sort of distraction in, uh, and then I hand over the chemicals to 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 the runner, okay. the proverbial runner, or try running myself. It uh, so depends I, on who's. Yeah, I'm claiming. Uh, let's see. So did you roll the dice? Yeah, I got a four. So I'm right. I'm putting a four on. Uh, and then I got eleven. Okay. Because no one you didn't roll eleven. I think you What's have to four on my on, on cool, uh, and this is basically uh, you try to it into into with uh, a bunch of other kids and making it look totally innocent by by showing them you know cool tricks with the the chemical and like sort of teaching a class. Okay. Uh, well, but yes. secretly we're actually you know figuring Trying out how to. to Yes. So yes, he did actually bring out the chemicals, but you're basically under surveillance for doing it. And then you start filming with the chemicals, and some of the you know so other people like up. cheer and uh, like uh, are saying this, but the teacher says, "Hey, you can't do that. This is very dangerous stuff. That's very di stop what you're doing right now." <laughs> I shouldn't have given this this chemical to you, damn kids. And he starts still trying to pull away the. Um, He's trying to take away the chemical from you now because he sees that you're being you're not doing what you're supposed to do with it. You're being unsafe with the uh, its proper <laughs> procedures. So yeah, that's my reaction there. Um, so who's gonna stand up next? Um, I, I hmm. I'll, do it. I'll stand up. Okay. So roll the dice. I got an eight. Eight. Which uh ha? And so eight. Which How do you use the eight? Yes, so eight. Uh, and the first, uh, who used that trait? 
I did. I uh, I was being the nice guy, the the eager okay, yes. student. Okay. Uh, yes. So yes. Uh, so you do you land on your own traits. So basically, how are you going to uh, be na- convince them to actually that you're going to to give up the chemical to you? Now I've got is... an idea. How about you just switch the labels on the bottles and then just say you're going to take this completely innocent chemical uh, out, and then maybe we could do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. So yes, that that's exactly what you do. Uh, you 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 actually decide. You basically are nice enough to tell. All right, we'll put everything back, and you do. And then you basically um, switch the labels on the chemicals while he's not looking. And then uh, you say, all right, well, well we like to take these out. And uh, he says, all right, well those those are pretty safe. Uh, just uh, remember to use them responsibly. So uh, yes, you managed to sneak up with the. Uh, by switching the labels of the uh, chemical, and now you have the chemical you need to uh, to pour over the rations or to uh, to get rid of the uh, the flavor crystals. Yep. Yeah. So yes, you succeed. Yay. So yes. So yes, you you would, with the, with the bottle of stuff you're able to with all the with all the rations you actually have are able to pour it over, and now they are safe to eat. Because they basically react with the crave of crystals and basically dissolve them. However, oh, wow. yes. however, however, the thing is that uh, you don't have enough chemical actually uh, to, to use on all of the of the thing. Also, you have to try and get to the actual supply of where they actually have these uh, rations, and figure out some way to mass distribute this chemical across all the rations in order to. Uh, in order to uh, make them safe. All right, all right. I see what you do. Yes. On. All right. So I've got a plan, right? I mean, we have this whole bunch of drugged rations. How about we distribute them to some of the guards standing around this this the the chemical plant? Uh, that way, we could have access to uh, to some of the bigger uh, supply depots. Uh, and then maybe, well, well uh, Ethan, you're a smart guy. Uh, what would be a, a, a clever way to mass disable or to mass uh, either free up large quantities of the soda or actually get the soda into the entire supply, uh, crystal supply cache? Okay. So this would be the next, the next scene is called heating up. So, okay. Well, well we... We still get our hope, though, right? So yes, your hope was that yes, you actually, get, the, the chemical actually does get rid of the flavor crystals. And so I think we should just wrap up that scene by saying, you know, yeah. we we get the all the supply, right? Yes, you got the supply. We get the chemical, chemical that we need. Yes, you do. Yeah. So Damien, I mean, we know we know the chemical we need in order to 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 save the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, know, you, you, you probably use it, use some of it on the actual rations you have in order to clean them. And then you basically so have you enough. Which, how, how can we get more of this stuff? That's, the, that's right. Yeah. That's the yeah. question. What's, What's our clever source? Did you get to? You rolled the the number that won for us. So you get to, you know, say how we how we succeed. Uh, although it's it's with Leo's help, right? In in what way do I explain that? Like, am I wrapping up the scene, or is? Yeah. Yeah, you get to to wrap up the struggle because you uh, rolled the winning number. So and how we managed to do what exactly? So our hope was to get the the chemicals we needed to clear all the rations. And you did. And we've... Yes, yeah. but you yes, but you still got to distribute the chemical or to on the on the affected rations to, for that to work for everybody. So is that what I'm explaining? Yes, you have to figure out y'all. You know, now you have to get that. He finds a way to shoot the chemical. Now you have to be a smart guy and figure out where we can get lots and lots and lots of soda. Yeah. Um, How do we do that? So... You get to be the hero, man. So is this... This is soda, right? It's not like some magical chemical? Uh, it's, it is... Uh, kind of like when it, I thought we were kind of going the route that it's a chemical and not like... Yes, it's called yeah. soda. Well, it's a chemical, yeah. but we call it the soda because oh, yes. you named it the soda. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I'm a special I chemical which basically dissolves uh, these these uh, special like uh, crystals. It basically dissolves these crystals so they become inert. 
Okay, so I need yes. I need to explain how we get more of this stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's not like I'm preparing the next scene. I I just described how we did it. No. Yeah. This is the the win. Yeah. You get to gotcha. to win the scene, thanks to you and thanks to uh to Leo. Okay. Um. All right. So we uh while we were doing that, we had um I mean there was that supply closet and that's where they keep it all. Yeah. So we were only allotted a you know a small amount to use, but we while we were doing that, we managed to get a hose hooked up to um, to some of the stuff that to like one of the, the to the big tank that's in there. And as we were like walking out with the stuff, we kind of we we um, snake the ta the uh, hose out the door with us and uh, and like filled up um, nice and just poured it into you know over the food or over the rations or whatnot. Okay, cool. All right, sounds good. So we got our own supply going. All right. So yes. Now yeah. Now it's scene three, which is heating up. Cool. So uh, let's see. This is where the plot gets really cranked up. The heating up scene is about the intense action and interpersonal conflict. The yo's continue to confront the kickoff and work towards answering the question. So basically, yeah, yes. Your basically your goal is now what probably is to try and find where they're distributing the. Uh, where the, the, the main ration supply is, where the where these drug rations are. Alternatively, where the uh, where the where the where the, the, the cleansing agent cash is. Oh, so the, uh, or the, uh, the yes, or the cash that could also steal it and then disseminate it amongst the kids so that they always have their ready uh, their their uh, the ability to clean their food whenever they need to. Okay. Because they they're gonna keep producing these rations whether we want to or not. They got them from somewhere and they're gonna keep using them. So uh, if we if we have the counteracting agent in in ready supply, that that will be an effectively meaningless uh, uh, supply. Yeah, that okay. they will re render their their supply of magic candy food uh, useless. Okay. So yes, uh, setting the scene. Which uh, French question or authority they're gonna show up in that scene? So, okay. actually, hang, hang, before we continue, I have a question on the, like, we, we won a couple of struggles, right? Yes. But the, the way we win the game, ultimately, is to get rid of their, one of their systems of control, or whatever? Uh, yes, basically, but that takes over multiple sessions. Like, basically, uh, oh, okay. at the end of the session, if you actually win the, uh, win the climax, you basically get to get rid of one of their systems of control, and you get another exploit. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna have, this is only going to have one shot, but yeah, you're not going to actually beat the entire authority in this in this game, but you're yeah, going to yeah. make a difference. But what what's the um? Let's see. Okay. Cool. Yes. Why? Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Carry on. I'm glad. So we now have to. I got a friendship question, right? Yeah, either a friendship question or authority figures. Yeah, whatever you want to see in this scene. So, so what are the scene is? We are. This is yes. the heating up scene, right? Yes, it is. Okay. I kind of want to cause problems for us because this seems like it's going too well. I, I kind of feel like we need to bring in that uh, snitch somehow. Cool. Okay, so yes, you want to bring in the snitch, yeah? Mm hmm Yeah. All right, so... Um... So uh, we, we, show, we go around showing the other, the other kids how to, uh, how to clean their food. And obviously, uh, Karen, uh, what's her name? Karen Seeley. Oh no. No, Wait, it's, uh, it's uh, sorry, it's not him. It was uh, Seth Locke. Yeah. So we show Seth Locke how to do it, and. Uh, oh wow! This is so cool. It's uh, some some awesome chemical you got there. Where did you hell how did you get that stuff? Oh, it's a secret where we got this stuff, but we know that this keeps the man from keeping us drugged, you know. It keeps the it keeps the it keeps the protectors down, you know. It's really awesome. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta, we gotta do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can't let the authority drug us all up. 
so what are you guys going to do next? You know, like, you can't, I don't think you have enough of this stuff to actually make all the food, uh, you know, edible. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to get some more. Oh, uh, wow, and uh, how are you going to do that? You uh, know where they actually have the stuff? Well, we, 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 yeah, we, we know where they have some of this stuff, yeah. We're kind of, we're kind of looking, we're shopping around at this point, so. Uh, we, we got our, we got our main brain man on it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys can do it, Hank. Once, uh, once you, once you have, get some of the stuff, I'll tell you what, I'll help distribute it myself in order to make sure that, uh, that all the food is good to eat. All right, you, uh, you spread the word. Oh, yeah, you have it. Uh, hey, man. You have my yeah, see you Yeah. Okay. So we run off, wander off. Uh, he wanders off while we teach this to the other kids, and uh, yes, starts calling trouble. All right. Or so, we, um, I mean, that could have been our plan to tell him and then follow him. But that's do we actually know another. That? That's Did a we? good point. It's not clear whether we do or don't. So we could know that he's kind of a snitch motherfucking asshole and purposely tell him so that he'll go tell somebody else and then maybe they'll go double the guard on the place where all the chemical is held. Hey, we just found out where it is. Oh, that's really smart. Yeah, that's uh, that, that would totally work. Okay. Provided, of course, that there's not also at the same time a threat against the bank and we end up having to hold up... Uh, a, a, goal, a, a vault full of gold, you know? Well, you know, if we get a vault full of gold, I think that's an okay outcome. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't eat the gold. Uh, that's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you're so you going to try and follow him or just going to... Yeah, after, um, after Leo talks to him, some of us should be following him. Um, theoretically, I think... Um, Ethan is the sneaky one, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So yes, this is going to be a conflict because he he's also like has probably some some abilities to sneak around and stuff because he's a snitch. So yes, he definitely is going to try and lose you in the in the in the crowd. So we're going to say this is the conflict. Uh, well, basically, our, my uh, your goal is that you're probably basically going to follow him back and figure out who's going to who he's going to talk to, and where the actual like uh, chemical supply well, is. Well, technically, technically, we don't have to follow him. We just have to see. Where the guard is doubled, where the where where security is increased. Okay, that's true. Yeah. So our so our hope is to find out where the more chemical is. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Right. Or where the the rations are, like the. No, where the chemical is. Batteries. We okay. the, the rations the rations are are infinite in supply. So even if we find the supply cache, then they're just gonna make new uh, new 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 rations with drug chemicals okay. in them. So we're gonna find an ample supply of 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 the counter agent. agents. Okay. And uh, right, we we found we have an ingenious plan of figuring that out. We're gonna watch well whilst they double the guard on the specific. Okay, building. so and, and that's um, the building we gotta hit. The building that now has extra guards is the building we're gonna hit. We're right. tanked. My hope is that basically he actually totally uh, blindsides you and gets away, and you don't know where uh, uh, he's gone. And also, they've totally been warned about you guys now that you know. You're in on on the drugging and also the way to counteract it. Sure. Or okay. you walk into walk into some, like uh, I go the wrong way and I walk into something that gets me in trouble. Don't yeah. do that. Possibly. Okay. So first of all, yes, we uh, first of all, who's gonna stand up? Uh, I guess I'll stand up because I'm gonna go try to follow him. So you gotta sneak. Use your sneakiness. I'm gonna use my sneaky sneaky. So roll your dice. Got a nine. Okay, so nine. Nine on the baby dog. Okay, so. And I get a four or a ten. I get a half tick for a four because that. And I get seven, of course, because the authority always gets seven. So, yes. Uh, yes, you, you sneak up and. Uh, and, you know, he doesn't see you actually coming, but he is definitely seems to be taking. Um, a long route um, uh, around, and then you see him go to uh, a panel and punch into something, and then uh, 
Then he says, uh, I have some information. There's some people who know about the plan. All right. Meet with the meet us at the meeting point. You know where it is. Says, yes. Okay. So you see that, and then he heads off. So that's but so now who's going to stand up next? Is, uh, I'll stand up next. Okay. Four. Four. Uh, oh, unfortunately, no. Uh, four, you fail, unfortunately. Uh, he actually, oh, no. Yes. So here's the thing. Do you want to lose this conflict and have him get away from you and uh, basically tell the uh, – give your identities to the, the man, or are you going to sell out? And if I sell out, you what happens? You win, but you have to, you have to, have to actually do, uh, uh, switch one of your traits to the bad trait and describe how you're using that trait to actually uh, uh, succeed here. Okay. Hmm. Well, I want to succeed, and it's a one-shot anyway. Okay. So... Spirit, burn it all down. <laughs> That's my misspent youth. What can you do? Yes. Sorry, I'm trying to... I wrote down the word, but I don't know what it means because it was a big word. Here we go. Yes. Because I have to find a way to work it in. Okay, so yes. Um, yes. yes. Okay, so I'm going to... I'll change my altruism to unctuous. What's unctuous supposed to mean? <laughs> That's the word I had to look up. I'm so glad I'm not alone. Um, whenever you're helping someone, you're trying to figure out what you're going to get out of it, oh, and you're yeah. really good at knowing the right people. Okay. Which is absolutely perfect for the situation. Okay, so how do you um, use that to actually get, uh, uh, get what you want? Um, I make some really questionable, shall we say, uh, back deal, or side deals <clears throat> to basically talk to some uh, people I'd rather not be dealing with okay. in order to get what I need, which is this information. Okay, so, yes. Uh, so, yeah, like I gotta say that he actually sees you and then runs away and he outdistances you, but you manage to get in contact with some seedy individuals and uh, real you have seen him at guys. the meeting point before. And uh, from them, they actually tell you where to find him. And from there, you're able to get to the main point. You spy out a conversation with uh, him and a bunch of other and some other shitty-looking individuals. And uh, you overhear saying that uh, they're gonna put the they're gonna double the guard at the um, at the uh, chemical plant. And also chemical plants. Okay. Yes. That really seems obvious yeah. enough. Which yeah, which one of the three chemical plants we now know? Yes, you know. Yeah, you figure out one. which one it is. Yeah. Like so the, it's the uh, chemical plant number three. <laughs> it's always the last place you look. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yes, but you are somewhat corrupt about that. Is you've now dealt with that. Uh, you had to actually bribe a few. Uh, you know, offer a few like shady individuals some uh, some ra additional rations and promises. Yes. Yes, nice. and uh, yes, the rest of you probably see this and say, well, you deal with these bastards, they're like, they're like criminals and all that, or uh, all like... These, yeah, uh, you these... sell it out. You, you shouldn't be looking at no, 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 no authority computer. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, them's, the, them's the bad guys. Yes. I'm really hungry, Vic. You got any extra rations? <laughs> okay, so yes, <laughs> you have succeeded to figure out where it is. So... Now it's down to seed four, which is uh, called uh, We Won. So far, things have been getting more difficult and complicated for the click, and your tension has been mounting. And We Won seeing the Yos need to get a victory to make them feel like everything is going to be okay, especially uh, given a crushing setback. They're going to suffer. You know, that the moment in a movie where it seems like the heroes are going to get their way, but you check the time, and there's still like 45 minutes left. This this scene is the moment of the of the game which can be really good turn to events as unexpected successes or even a false ending. 
Okay, so... So yes, you, to you totally uh, have this now. You know exactly where the chemical is. You just go in there, get the chemical, and just totally... Uh, and they say it's a chemical plant number three, which happens yeah. to be the chemical weapons plant. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, it is. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yes, it is the chemical weapons plant. So who, which authority figure is going to be, or French question I'm going to say here, is involved in this? Who hasn't picked one yet? Uh, I picked the I last one. Have I picked one yet? Because uh, I don't recall picking one of those five. I mean, no, I... I it was, it was John, me, and Andrea. So go, Lucas. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I'm thinking that either uh, uh, Detective Gabriel has been informed of our, uh, of our impending attack, and yes. uh, he's now skulking. He's he's been assigned to the to uh, chemical plant number three uh, uh, yeah. as a special agent. All right, sure, that sounds like a good idea. So yes, okay. So yes, you head to to chemical plant number three, and yes, you see that the door definitely has like like two large uh, you know guards outside guarding the the main entrance, and uh, it's like it has, it's, the place is on lockdown at the moment. There's a big security door. Uh, there's surveillance drones, you know, like looking around, making sure no one even gets close to the door, and keep an eye on things. So yes, you actually uh, so so, so my uh, uh, so let's get the stakes here. So what's your stakes? What do you want to achieve in this scene? Well, we, we want just... a stable and steady supply of 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 counter agent agent. Okay, so you want to get your supply of counter agent. So uh, Damien think... has has uh, ambi ambitiously started up the roll twenty, yeah. but there is no is campaign. Is the wrong thing. So, okay. Would somebody uh -huh. like to create a campaign, or shall we just sort of wing it with the graphics? No, no, we're not we're not using roll twenty. No, just I guess it's okay. Yeah, we don't really use roll twenty yeah. here. Okay. Um. So, so our hope is to. Uh, so our hope is to secure clean, a steady clean rations. Of clean rations for everybody. Yes. Yeah, so you'll, yeah, yeah, you want to get us a supply of the chemical. The cleaning agents. Okay. And yes. our. Uh, what's the other one? What's the other question we have to answer? What if we fail? Yes. Yeah, so you yeah, fail. You get you, you 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 don't get the chemical and you get arrested. All right. We're getting yes. arrested. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. uh. So yes. Yeah. So you see two like armed, uh, you know, guards outside the, uh, you know, angels outside the front of the uh, of a big security door to the entrance into the chemical plant three. So who's gonna stand up? Hey, real quick uh. question. Yeah. If I use a trait, can I no longer use my motive because it's unctuous now, or do I just use unctuous? No, you can actually use unctuous as as a trait now. Okay. So yes. Yeah. Yes. You, it's still you can still use it in the conflict. You just use it uh, and you know, basically using doing you know a, a, like using your negative trait instead of your positive trait to do things. Okay. To, yes. So it's still right. usable. I'll, I'll stand up. Okay. So roll the dice. Let's see, what dice do, what numbers do I get for this here? I get two and twelve, so you actually have a good chance of winning this because I don't get a lot of I didn't expect this to go so long, so I actually have to leave in like nine minutes, but I'll try to hang out for this last scene. Okay. okay. Sorry guys. That's fine. Looks, it happens. Like, uh, looks like Ethan's getting arrested. <laughs> so uh yeah, so I got nine with climbing and I'm actually uh gonna you know, I'm kind of climbing, avoiding the guards by by going in through the roof, basically, of this series. So I climb up the side of the, the storage area where they they're not looking, and uh, freaking rappel down like uh, uh, what's it called, Mission Impossible style. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the roof. I, I I am assuming that since we're the spelunkers, we are able to follow you, but uh, you sort of have to lay yeah, way throw a rope down for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm setting up the ropes and everything for us. Okay. So <laughs> seven, eight. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. And I seven and two. So the way I'm counteracting is that uh, 
They the um, this place is on high security alert. So yes, uh, you go up there and you eventually set your friends up. But then uh, a civilian's drone actually pops out from from inside the uh, the upper tunnels and looks at you and then lets out us. And yes, the um, the guard one of the guards uh, the guards outside actually looks at you. And says, hey, you stop! And they start hitting their jetpacks, start flying up towards you. <laughs> oh no. Oh, they sound more like the guys from the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, what's the, the game here, from Half-Life, you know. You, stop. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Because they have the, the, you know, microphones in their, in their helmets. Yeah. They have, they, they don't, they have, like, the full helmet on their face. Right. Can we say, can we say that, um, uh, you know, maybe I lower I lower everybody else down, and then as I'm coming down, they that's when they they spot me. You yeah. Because I, I get I get some measure of success. Yes. You know, I get I get to do a cool thing, and then yeah, yeah you do a cool thing, and then yes, as as you're doing that, a uh, uh, surveillance drone sees you and starts setting off a successful alarm, yeah. and then the guards are responding. So who's gonna stand up? I will. Yes. Go for it. Yeah. So <laughs> this is a trick I've used before. Um, it's really effective. You pull out a whole bunch of little metal jacks and you throw them and they get sucked into the intake of the jetpack and then it kind of goes... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... The Excellent. So, yeah. That's an 11. 11. Okay, that's another number I got. So you can put that there. And I get 12. So yes, you throw the thing, and yes, I guess into one of the jetpacks, and he ends up, you know, but ah, he loses control, and then he crashes into one of the walls, and he's, uh, you know, like pizzas against one of the the walls of the caves, but only gets one of them. The other one uh, goes up, and then he starts firing uh, stun rounds at you with his uh, with his rifle, basically knock out. Okay. Sure. I yeah. think now would be a time for me to uh, stand up to authority. Yes. So roll the dice. Let us roll. Roll. Oh, hang on. I forgot to clear my dice. But I rolled another five and another three. Or does? No. Yep. Yep. Just kind of. You got an eight. Eight. Okay. 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 And another eight. Okay. So this what do you do? Scene. Stand up. And yes, I get. Uh, so I get the, three. So the stun, uh, the stunner actually just hits me. But yeah. it's not that strong enough for me to uh, for for me to fall down, so I sort of just yes. tough it out. Yes. Okay. So yes. Uh, so you tough it out. Okay. So yes. Here's my reaction. Okay. So then you you run in the tunnel, but that's when um, uh, three more guards show up, uh, respond to the alarm. One of them is Gabriel, and he says, oh, no. "Who are there, kids?" You're under arrest for disrupting the uh, the actions of the protectors. Lay down your arms and surrender. Uh, I'll arms? stand up <laughs> and hope to God I don't roll really bad. Okay. <clears throat> Twelve. Gosh, dice okay. hate me. Oh yes. Oh, You're gonna sell out some more. You sell out. <laughs> I yes, might as well. Why the heck not? <laughs> okay. So yes, what trait are you gonna sell out in order to to uh, stop my uh, stop the angels from totally overpowering and arresting you? <sighs> I'll sell out my uh, orphan trait for helpless. Okay. And um. <laughs> okay, how is being helpless gonna stop them from arresting you? Uh, well, have... it's not going to stop them from arresting me because that's the idea: is to distract them by letting myself get arrested while everyone else gets away. Hmm. Or possibly, perhaps you could uh, well, let, let well, Ethan get arrested. I'm not sure actually, if you could then uh, sacrifice. Uh, yes, but the person who uh, you sell out, we we win. So nobody gets arrested because we just right. Won. You can you guys you guys can always save me. Right. So we actually get our thing. We get our supply. Yes. Yep. But, yes. Uh, but, uh, yes. Uh, you have to. You're, you're, so helpless. What is that supposed to mean exactly? Uh, let's take a look at the tr and decide how this is actually going to prevent them from getting all of you. Let's see. 
So perhaps they haven't spotted us all yet, and instead they find this helpless little orphan who's simply gotten lost in this strange... And okay, yes, you manage to get some distance guessing, but they start closing in, and she yeah. totally... Uh, you manage to lose them in, in some various tunnels, and she uh, puts herself out a sacrificial lab and it gives up, and so it slows them down enough that you're able to get to the chemical. So you're supposed and... to describe doing something so vile, heinous, and authority-like yes. that it makes everyone writhe and groan at uh, with loathing and sadness. Yes. Oh, so, no. So you are, Andrea, how are you the uh, doing something vile or... Um, so, okay. To, to so get I... Get us out of this mess. Basically... Yes. Um, basically say, I got this, or something, and motion for you guys to go. And as you guys are, like, running away, you look over your shoulder and you see my character, you know, with her hands up, obviously surrendering. Yeah. And one of them takes a, uh, like, uh, obviously, like, I'm a little girl, so it only takes one of the three, really, to yes. arrest me. But as the other two go to go after you guys, um, she says, don't bother, I can tell you where to find them. Okay. Oh, oh. Yes, you see that. This, all right. Mm, and do we overhear this, or do we not overhear this? Yeah, of course let's, we do. Let's assume yes, that you we overhear this. Yes, yes, you overhear this. Yes, point to one yes, of our supply yes, tanks, and we know, know the people That you've done something fucked up. So yes, you actually overhear this. So yes, that actually stops them for a moment. Is, uh, yes, he uh, says, tell me any for everything, he says, as he looks into your, your eyes. <laughs> but yes, yeah. But you've run away, so you yes. He's less urgent now, but concerned that he now has has someone who's going to spill the beans and just like tell them exactly where you where you guys are hiding. So yes, so yes, you managed to get to the the chemical and uh, grab enough of it. So, however, that's where we're going to go to the next uh, scene. So you have enough. You have enough chemical now. As uh, wait, how how do you actually get the big tank of chemicals out of the out of the facility now? Well, I, I sort of figured that uh, instead of, of of actually stealing the chemical, we open up a certain valve somewhere so yes. that this chemical partially gets flown out into the public system. Ah, uh, okay. That yeah, that I, 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 of I you do that. I say that there's basically well a done. purge a purge system, basically. Um, which, you, which is used to, you know, get rid of, like, unwanted chemicals, and you basically set the purge but then you uh, to let the chemical out, but then you change the, some of the valves so it actually redirects through the, through the pipes in order to go where you want. Yeah. Yes. So, so now uh, we have unlimited access to this stuff. All we have to do is find one of these, these, these waste outlets and hold our food underneath it. Yes. And, and it will presumably get more clean than it will get filthy because of all the waste. <laughs> Yeah. Man. All right. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, the, the so, food so might taste terrible so, or alternatively might kill us. All right. Uh, so, uh, yes. Uh, now here's the scene. Let's uh, see. How about, about, which, uh, see. How about Ethan? Yeah. How about Ethan? You, you uh, set the next scene before you, just before you take off? You can do that. So you can get... So this yeah. next scene is about... Uh, it's going to be us at our lowest point. Uh, yes, it's called and, We're Fucked. <laughs> all, all, hope, all hope seems lost, and uh, we're going to have to scramble mightily to get our shit together. Um, so one so. one suggestion I would like to make now is that if uh, that since Damien might have to bow out at any point, what if uh, uh, Andrea takes over Ethan uh, whilst uh, uh, Vic is detained? Okay, that sounds good. Sure. Okay, so the is detained. So what, what characters do I have uh, available still? Or, I mean, what haven't been used yet? Um, the news reporter, the uh, protector of the future, and then we can talk about any of the questions. Mm -hmm. um, the only th I think the only one we've actually talked about is the Vic and the rations, or rations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, you can't have authority for a show up more than once, though, if you want. So because this is going to be a low point, we're going to bring in um, the fact that... Um, what's his name? Leo had orphaned... Bex and Vic. Vic. Yeah. Um, accidentally. Sure. Cool. Okay, and then what's the... Uh... 
the first five seconds here. Um. So I'm not. Hmm. So we had just escaped. Yes, you managed the facility it. and you've redirected the chemical where you want it now by messing so, with, the, with, the, with the computers and the dials and so, such. Yep, we did it. We set up to the man. Uh, the yep. rations are safe. Everybody, everything's cool. We we got away scot free. Oh, except Big just uh... <laughs> sold everyone out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I have an idea of what's going to happen here. So you you pretty much have gone back to your 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 uh, your headquarters now. He'll say, Oh yeah, yeah, we won. Yeah, we succeeded. But then you get raided by the uh, <laughs> by the authority. Hmm. All right. So I still need the first five seconds here, or is yes. that? Yeah. Yes, the first yes. five seconds. Yes. Okay. So yeah, if you go so, back to Evasia and say, "Oh yeah, we succeeded, we won, yeah, we got everything done," and then suddenly, uh, suddenly, uh, yeah, I have, have an idea here. Uh, basically, the wall caves in, and a big, big drilling machine just rips through the wall. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Isn't that cool? Yes. And uh, so, um, cool. I now have to tell tell uh, Andrea, and I, I now have to tell Bex why uh, how he was orphaned. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I just I, I just I think already you've already him. told him. Yeah. yeah but this already... probably losing something that is like this is like the second home, like this is a safe place, and it's just been ripped away from you. Yes. So. That probably re-evokes that whole orphaning exactly. thing again. Okay, so they basically have called in the, the artillery, uh, basically a big, uh, uh, it's basically an angel's drilling machine it's used to drill out like uh, bolt holes and stuff like that and, uh, and your raid, uh, raid places. And so one, they've sent one after you, and it's basically, it's basically an APC as, as well as a, a drilling machine. So, uh, so, yes. so maybe for, um, for Leo or for Bex, or both yes. maybe, this is a, a big, uh, you know, you you think back to the the last time when there was yeah. a cave in, right? Yeah. Uh, and like, how how are you guys dealing with that? How do you? What does it look like? Uh, do you say anything? Yeah. Well, we should be able to finish it by six, I think. Um. Okay. I think okay, I. Did. Six. I so, yeah. so he just left us. We wish him Godspeed, and uh, this means that uh, Andrea is taking over for uh, for for Damien's character. Yeah. So we have to, about 25 minutes. Is that yes. right? Yes. Hopefully yeah. we'll get that. We'll just go through these okay. scenes as fast as possible. Okay. So we've got the conflict right now. Basically, what, what's your what's your goal here now that your face is not being raided by the angels? So we gotta get out of here because uh, we're if if uh, you know they're coming to arrest us. Yes. Specifically us, because they know we raided their chemical plant. So we have yes, to. They know we raided plant, and also you get sold out by. Uh... <laughs> I say yeah. Yeah. yeah so we have to go somewhere off the radar that Vic doesn't know about. Yes. Actually, I think uh, you know, you guys are all thinking about yourselves. I think our goal should be to get the uh, get the knowledge out to the the people, right? Like we're gonna get arrested. But maybe we can get the get the word on on how to deal with these these drugs and that they're yeah. drugging the rations. I yeah, agree. Yeah, basically, you have to try and get the word out to say that the uh, authority is basically drugging the food. I agree with but that. But you can and, and 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 here's how you by holding it in. Yeah. Yeah, and here's where the chemical. You know, here's our store. Counter agent. To uh, this, this is how to you know this is how you clean the food. All you have to do is hold it up under the waste fence of chemical plant three. Yeah. Which may sound a little crazy, but yeah. We're... So our our <laughs> hope is to help the people. You know. Protect themselves instead. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yep. But yeah, first of all, you gotta get. Uh, first of all, what are you gonna do against these guys who are trying to arrest you? I think you'll think that'll be the whoa, next whoa. scene. That that'll be a good that, like. That, uh, that we figure out after we roll. Well, right? that's yeah. That's our goal, and if we win, we get it. So. Yeah. We'll so this thing that we better it. probably in the next scene, which is the climax. Like, do you succeed in actually informing people of this and 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 uh, yeah. protecting the food yeah. supply or not? This scene well, is probably trying to avoid getting getting arrested by the authority. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. so basically, your your okay. your goal in this scene is right. probably get away in order to then you can then in the next scene you can probably end up uh, trying to accomplish uh, your main goal. Right. Okay. So. 
I think uh, right. so. You, it's up to you to decide what your goal of the seed is, but I don't think that. Uh, okay, you'll we'll get away. You Live can. to fight another day? Yes, so try and get away yeah. from the authority. So, yes, who's going to stand up? I better I, roll first this time because. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, this, oh, is where, dear. this is where the authority actually has the strongest. Uh, Nine. Who is Ethan, right? Yep. Um, and Ethan will sneak everybody out as they're drilling through the wall. Nice. He will uh, Nine, notice seven, a gap in their defenses and sneak them through. Seven, and I also get an, uh, another number, too. I think you get... Uh, six. Six. Because I get the high numbers this time. Because uh, this is the scene we are fucked. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, that, that. So, okay. So, uh... Yes, you start right down the tunnel, but then that's when the um, some of the angels uh, get all the APCs. There they are, and uh, basically hit their jet packs and start speeding towards you down the tunnel. Oh no! Yes. Okay. So who's gonna stand up next? I'll stand up. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Uh, okay, that's uh, not enough. That was the number I could have gotten, but you grabbed it. And we're we gonna do. Uh... So how are you going to stop the uh, angels from, from chasing you down there? Uh, I'm actually going to use my my uh, stubborn disorder. and oops. So yes, I get to get 2 or 12, so I'll and, take uh, uh, 2. Okay. I'm going to actually... Uh, while you guys are... are Sneaking off, you know, I'll I'll stop in the in the entrance to the tunnel yes. and uh, just start, you know, punching the guys out, knock them away, <laughs> hold them so off. So what what trait are you using? Stubborn. Nice. Stubborn. Actually, actually my flaw. Nice. Okay. Pretty yes. Not very not bright. So yes, you managed to kick out one of uh, hit one of the guards and he caught, loose and cone crashed into one of the walls and uh, is disabled. But then the, the other two guards on you basically start beating the hell out of you. Yep. Yes. They basically so, you know, back, hit, back hit you with the butt of the rifles. Okay. So now it would be time for me to uh, stand up. Yes. Um, Laurel. Five and five, excellent. Um, that means I get ten. Yes, you do. Excellent, yes. And uh, I am outraged by this, 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 this extreme, this extreme ridiculous brutality. violence, uh, yeah. the ridiculous brutality of this. And I, uh, I, 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 uh, you know, I attacked those two other, uh, the two other uh, guards. I just <laughs> charge. I actually, uh... okay, well, actually, you, you respond, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so, yes, you charge into them, and then, yes, uh, you manage to um, to knock out another uh, another guard by just, you know, beating on him, and, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you knock him down, although he has armor on, so he, he's only uh, stunned, and... Uh, the, the other guard says, "All right, clear clear the hallway. I'm gonna drop drop one." And uh, with that, he uh, him and the three guys back off, and he drops uh, a grenade of some kind. So who's gonna stand up to this one? Yeah, I'm gonna yes. stand up again. Actually, yeah, I think I'm gonna. I, I would also like to stand up. Who's who only who only the is? first person? Yes, I did it. Okay. I rolled a ten, which is actually a uh, outrage. Yes. Yep. So, so I win. Yes. Uh, but with the help of, of Leo. So, yes. And we get to. Uh, I think you know we, as he drops the grenade, um, Leo. Uh, yes, you recognize it as a I, I catch a concussion it. grenade. Basically, it's not a grenade which will kill you, but basically knock you out. Yeah. I yes. catch it. And yes. then I hold it out, and then the football uh, kickoff kicks it right back at the guards, right back yes. at the end. Oh, yeah, okay. so boom, it explodes, nice. and they only think, knocked, you know, uh, maybe, get maybe, stunned uh, and knocked Leo, down to the ground. Leo recognizes this from uh, from when he, you know, accidentally uh, caved in. Like, maybe this is the, the, the kind of grenade he was using uh, <laughs> to cause the cave in. So he, yeah. he knows immediately what's going on. 
Yes. Uh, and then um, uh, Tommy, you know, takes takes his lead and. Uh, Tommy, uh, 46, 97, hood, hood, hood. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, Tommy actually, uh, you know, grabs the guy with the grenade and and uh, throws him off down the down the shaft. So it's you know it's far enough away from us when it when it goes off. Um, and uh, now yeah, they will be coming after us because they, they the know guards, we're... The guards yeah. before yeah, before yeah, no, 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 not exactly that. I think what happens is that okay, we're, you knock them back and enough. the grenade goes off and because it's the table is kind of unstable, it collapses and basically totally blocks them off, allowing you to yeah. escape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, so yes, now it's the, the the scene, the climax. So, I guess uh, you kind of described that earlier of what you really want to happen. So, uh, yes, the climax scene is uh, basically who wins. Hmm. It's called. Yeah. So basically, so yeah, this is a scene which will either break or break you. This is probably the most important scene in the game, basically. Okay. If if the authority wins this, they basically will you you'll fail at your mission. But if you you win this, you win. This this. Okay. Uh, Brendan, do you want to? Yeah, totally. Up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm picking uh, Jessica Jean of the Weather Channel because what's going to happen is we escape. Yes. And then that entire situation gave me a really solid idea. So we're going to go steal that drilling machine and drill right into the side of the Weather Channel building. <laughs> and we're going to come running out um, and take over and just start broadcasting across the Weather Channel. This is how right. you clean your food. So that's the first five seconds. Yeah. If okay. I can drill into the, into the uh, building. Fuck All right. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. You read the message. APC the and rile into the building. So, yes. For the record, Ethan says this is a really bad idea. Yes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Ethan. <laughs> Okay, so, so who's right, gonna say that we um, have to... technically, technically Jessica Dean is a reporter, so there is a possibility she's actually come out to the cavern where we are. Sure. Uh, and well, then all we just have to do is yes. jump in front of the camera. She's actually a reporter. Try. She actually currently tried to report on like the uh, like a, a heinous theft of like uh, some mystery. Well, we already, of, uh, we already established. Uh, so. yeah. We already drove into the studio, man. We already yeah. drove into the studio. Yeah. 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 We're in the yes. studio. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, okay. So and we of course we had to bring Ethan along because he's got the best chance of knowing yeah uh, crap. <laughs> okay. So who's gonna stand up here hastily? Um, I will. What happens, um, what, 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 no, I will. Okay. Who, so who Donald, what happens if uh, what happens if you um, what happens if you actually fail here is that you don't get you you basically get stopped for the, they basically shut down the, the broadcast network and uh, they also discover where their catch of uh, chemical is. So they totally stop your yeah. entire plan to cleanse the food. And nobody believes us, obviously. They, yes. Uh, yes. They, and yeah. then you have to basically <laughs> then sell the office terrorists. I say that you would get away still, but you'll basically sell off as tech terrorists trying to disrupt the network that sure. you stole from the chemical plant. And they, they, we would just be silly you. kids. Yeah. We'd be silly kids trying to uh, yes. trying to disrupt the system, trying to be messy teenagers, you know. Yes. And, and if we yeah. make it, then we not only save the day, but we are folk heroes. Yes, you fully broadcast yeah. the, uh, yeah. the truth across the web, and uh, yes. All right. Cool. So okay. Go ahead. Right. Roll it, Lucas. Yeah, I get to go first. You sure? Yes. So roll. Let's see, I gotta set, reset the authority. The control track. I thought oh, she's already reset. Okay. So roll the dice. I roll five. Five. Okay. So that's that. And let's see, what numbers do I get? For this here, so what's, what's I get five or nine, so that means I get uh, seven and nine. No one has rolled a seven yet for some reason. Seven should be the most common uh, number. It's because I'll roll you it my next turn, I swear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So right. what I do is I uh, I use my charismatic. Yes. And I just jump onto in front of the camera and say, "Ladies and gentlemen, tonight a special news bulletin. Our food is is your food being drugged, and what can you do about it?" Later, let's see. <laughs> yes, uh, okay, so yes, the way I'm going to react back is that um, the reporter who's there, uh, which you're actually in, says, "Yes, but uh, aren't you, uh, aren't you, 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 aren't you the ones involved in, in poisoning in, in potentially poisoning the food with the chemicals you stole from the chemical plant?" And he shoves a, a, a shoves a microphone in your face too to try and uh, counteract you. So that's uh, my response to that. 
Nice. She's basically trying to say that you're uh, that you're trying to grow up the food instead. <laughs> All right. Right. Yes. I'm stand sure. Up. I'm sure Bex has an answer for that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me roll. <laughs> there it is. Oh, seven. Nice. Seven. Right. So yep. you're gonna fail. Oh, you can, oh, you can oh, fail, or you can sell something out. Yeah. No, I'm selling out. Oh, sweet. <laughs> okay. Man. Of so, uh, like, so what you selling is, out? I had I had such high hopes for Bex. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, let's go with just outrage. Uh, I'm selling it out and getting wrathful. So, um, you'd probably just punch. Beat yeah, the shit no, out she's, of her. she's like, "Aren't yeah, you the I ones putting drugs in?" And I'm like, "I'm like, shut the fuck up!" And I just punch her in the face. And I stare at the camera and I'm like, "All of you people are fucking sheep. Listen to us now and do what we tell you. You goddamn worthless sacks of shit." Jesus. <laughs> Yes. I just stalk off. In the meantime, just sort of wait. Okay, on so the... I got to extend the ration that basically you just beat the crap out of all the... Uh... No, 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 no. It's not vicious, which is the opposite of uh, tough. Yeah, you're being wrathful. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't I don't beat the shit out of everyone. I just, I, I go off on a tirade. Yes. Uh, an angry tirade where I, I call all of the people of this entire area just worthless. Oh, yes, yes, very good, very good. Yes. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Very yeah. well That's... described. Good job Excellent. earning their trust there. Goal, then. You managed to you managed to hijack the station and basically set up the uh, you work together and you set up the uh, the feed and this is all sent out and uh, yes now there's some uh, definitely some unrest going on and people don't trust the food anymore. Can't now believe that they, you that they, they know that they're, that they're drugging the food now. We're supposed to be better than them. Yes. So normally this what we would are. happen in this case is that uh, if we're actually playing a full game, you probably would actually change um, one of the um, the system control because now the fraction of food supplies would not apply anymore because now the food is not trusted. So right. basically that would change into a, an exploit in the at the end of the game pretty much. Yep. Okay. Yep. So yes. So but we have one more scene, which is the aftermath. So six. Who wants six? Okay, scene seven. Yes. Dust settles. Yes. The dust this settles. Reflection, recuperation, and retreat. If you fucked up badly enough in the last scene. <laughs> uh, dust settle scene should be quieter, giving plenty of room for character exploration, and perhaps give a hint uh, what's ahead in the next episode. Yeah. Uh, should also be the shortest scene. Interesting stuff is mostly done. All right. So cool. Uh, Okay, so I think I think what's happening in the aftermath of this is that because people don't really trust the food of the um, of the actual um, givers, um, people are, are like growing their own food now and also making sure that their food is safe before actually eating it. And basically, this totally gets with the rationing thing is that people are now feeding the, uh, working together to feed themselves rather than have the authority to provide the food for them. Nice. So nice. that actually yeah. gets rid of the rationing problem. So I think, uh, and then that probably also would give an exploit of some kind as well too. For this thing, we should do. Let me see here. Yes. However, um, we still have one last scene because basically there's going to be a damage control done by the authority. So we have one authority figure who has not showed up yet. So we're working on the. I'm thinking uh, we're working on the community farm, the new community farm where we're for growing yeah. our own healthy crops. Yes, sure. And uh, uh, we've had Jessica Jean now, so I'm gonna. Exit yes, out. I think who's gonna show up is the actual. Um, it's well, gonna be I Karen think... Selly, the, the yes, protector, Karen Selly, the protector of the future. Yes. Who's meddling with our with our uh, community farm, with our with our children yes. outreach project for the community farm? Yes. Okay, so yes, uh, she shows up with a bunch of her, uh, her kind of servants to one of the big community farms we're currently working at right now. Yes, and say, please, please, citizens, don't disperse about uh, what what has been do done. What we have done is order to help society. These these are our all natural ingredients and in our in what we have given you in order to uh, better create a more peaceful and cohesive society. So please, you don't have to uh, to, to labor yourself with uh, growing your own food. We can we can provide all that you need. So yes, uh, the conflict is that. Um, 
they're not gonna. She's not gonna be able to convince Era control all the damage, but she's gonna convince some people to go back to taking the uh, authorities' food. That's what I my goal is. At least try and do some damage control, like convince at least some people in order to to uh, trust the author authorities. Uh, you know, rationing it again, although they're not, it's not going to be completely effective. And what's your goal here? What is your goal in order to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, authority? That she knew and was in on it and can never be trusted again. Okay. So, yes, who's going to stand up? She gets replaced as yeah. protector of the future. I'll, yes. I'll call her out. Fuck yeah. Yes. Be like, no, what the hell are you talking about? All right, I'm yes. going to roll. All right, so I got a four. Yeah, I'm calling upon Wrathful, because I'm just an angry, angry person. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, what the fuck are you talking about? You fucking put crystals in our food to fucking drug us and turn us into fucking puppets, and now you come down here talking all nice, like like we should fucking care? What the fuck? You, you knew about this. You let it happen. You probably signed the fucking papers that made it happen. Get the fuck out of here. All right, so... Let's see, I get uh, two or twelve for this. Okay, so so um, seven, and I get uh, two, and you rolled a what? I got a four. Okay, so actually, I you get a see, I get a I get a, a twelve then. Okay, so her counter to this to 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 things is oh, such the such a zoom of youth indeed, but. Believe me, we need to control these these emotions. We have to be calm and civil, and we have to create a. And oftentimes, we need to have some medication in some of our food in order to create, uh, to calm down these emotions and create a peaceful place where people can live in happiness and and joy. So, uh, wow. yes, that's her counteract to that. Basically, she's trying to convince people that like, uh, these drugs actually are helping people. Like, uh, you know. Be more calm and civil, and uh, okay. Who will yes. stand up? Yes, who will stand up? I will. Uh, stand up. Yeah. And probably oh. roll a two or a twelve. Ethan and or Vicky. Seven. Seven. Who? Oh. Unbelievable! There. You actually managed to do it. So oh, yes, are you gonna sell out or win or let the authority win? I am so good at rolling all the dice, you guys. Yes. So good. <laughs> Don't. Um, so, how are you going to sell out? Don't sell out again, man. <laughs> no, he hasn't sold sell out, out yet. Every... This is a whole new yeah, character is, I get to ruin. This is Ethan. <laughs> okay, no. So, yes, you can sell out, or you can uh, just let it gonna, happen. Like, gonna either way, you, you, you definitely make an impact. Their rationing plan has totally gone to pit. It just means that the authority will have some, still permit some people to go back to the drug food. So because, say, because, because, because it makes the people calm, because then the adults will give the food to their kids in order to get them under control. Yeah, so I'd say you you ruin optimistic because you uh, way that you you, exactly. you explain exactly what uh, what the deal is. Yes. But you realize that not everybody that some people are just gonna gonna live under the desire to live on the oppression of the uh, of the protectors. That, yeah. uh, and that makes you cynical. You realize that no, it's impossible for everyone to be saved. Yeah. Exactly. Because some people don't want to be saved. Nice. But exactly right. how but this causes the, the crowd to sway in our favor, I don't know. Yes. Least, yeah. you, how yes, 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 I know, I know, I know. You uh, waited, you know, the, uh, the, the, the tear of a child, uh, of an innocent child rolling down her cheek as she realizes that her hopes and dreams for a better tomorrow are shattered <laughs> and bashed. And uh, everybody just looks at it and goes, "Oh, we can't let this happen. This, uh, uh, this, 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 such innocence, such ruination yes, yes, caused by." Give the kids that you know this, this, these drugs. No, we need to you know care for our children, but not you know give them you know food which will uh, you know, alter their behavior or something like that. Yeah. Yes. We, we cannot poison their minds. Hmm. Okay. So yes. It's, uh, it's that movie in the moment where you know you've you've got that quiet kid who's always yes. in the background, and he yeah. comes out as an absolute badass. It's that sort of reveal moment yes. where everyone's like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. So yes, the the people say, "You get out of here. We're not, we're not interested in your food anymore." 
And yes, she doesn't want a conflict, so she leaves, and yes, she eventually gets replaced, because she nice. totally does not do the damage control, someone else takes her, her spot, and she's, you know, yeah. loses her job, but the authority is still in control, but now at least one of the and... of their systems of control are now is out of control. Poor Ethan, though. So what, okay, what motif... I know. But before we end this <laughs> game, I just want to ask one question. What motif would be good for another exploit now that uh, you've totally uh, destroyed their rationing plan? So we haven't actually destroyed the rationing system, so now we have access to both healthy food yes. and drugged food, which we can use at some point to drug the wrong sort of people. Nice. Okay. So yes, so drug. So basically, drug food would be your exploit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can use oh, it yes. the, the angels and such. Yes. So oh, yeah. Right. So that's that sort of happens. So hopefully you yeah. enjoyed the game. That was pretty fun. Uh, that's the first time I've run this game, though. So sorry if I was, it was kind of rusty. It also had a different version of the book too. So <laughs> yeah, right. but uh, you know, it, it's a fun system. I I like it. It's it's yeah. easy to implement it to other uh, other environments. Yes, it is. You can tell like the, like tons of different plots for this game. Totally. Yeah. Like the game, but like uh, the plot we had when I actually played it was one where uh, the authority was uh, basically uh, the government who basically controlled like what people uh, uh, like the media pretty much and showed uh, basically uh, kept people from like expressing themselves artistically and all that and they had like mm -hmm. censors which would. Uh, which would uh, wipe out any type of uh, offending media. They had like a group called the Whites, which basically would spray over art and stuff like that, and uh, mm -hmm. you know other groups and stuff. So yeah, so you can come up with, like tons of weird stuff like that, in, in this game. Cool. Yeah. yeah. This was a lot of what? fun. Well, thank you for running. It was. It okay. Was a lot of fun. I'm glad to run it. Uh, hopefully, uh, you what's get, you uh, what's, what's this system called? Uh, uh, this Ben Youth. Misspent and mis youth. yeah, misspent youth is the is the mis session. Mis misspent youth, yes, is, is the game. It's that's uh, the whole game. Yes, yes. that's Robert, the whole game. So this okay. Robert Ball is the designer. Yeah, you can check it out by. He also to... made a game called like uh, Against the Darkness or something like that. Or it's called what? A Curse of the Darkness. It's another game which he's made. It's uh, it's a pretty great weird game. I played it before. It's uh, it basically surrounds like this uh, maniac that's found the ability to open the way to an, uh, a realm called the In Between and cause these shadows to come out and basically kill most of the population of the planet. And basically, for the survivors, he said, basically, you have to live in peace. And if you don't, I'll send my shadows after you and kill you. Oh, okay. Yes. Ooh. So it's more of a uh, Buffy the Vampire Sayer sort of business. Yeah. MisfitYouthGame.com to, uh, to find yeah. that. Misfit Youth and uh, probably his other games you can find from there too. So cool, man. All right, great. Thanks, All everyone. Right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening.